It is just a huge honor for me today to bring back for a second time something I almost never do, Muhammad Ali Javer, the CEO of Added. He joined me two years back to discuss their patient booking guarantee. He talked about how Adit, and that name comes Adit from Advertising Technology, AD for Advertising, IT for Technology, um, guarantees results for dental practices looking to grow their practices using online marketing. Since then, it seems Adit has grown a lot, is now offering dental providers with an all-in-one practice growth platform that goes along with the marketing. Adit now centralizes the entire patient journey from online online marketing to integrated scheduling, patient communication, and patient reactivation. This is not an advertising. He didn't pay. How much did you pay me to come on the show today? Nothing. Both the times. Checks, so thank the you checks so much. The, actually, uh, the check is going to be in your mail because you live two hours from four of my six grandchildren. You're in Houston. They're in Beeville. So if you start getting letters from the IRS saying, uh, why are you doing so many business trips to uh, Beeville? I'm going to say, uh, talk to Ali. By the, by the way, um, I love your name more than anything because it's Muhammad Ali, one of my biggest school childhood heroes of all time. And I live in Phoenix. He, he, when he, um, he left, lived the last decades of his life right here in town. And you dropped the Muhammad part. And I thought, my gosh, I mean, to have a name Muhammad Ali and not go by, how come you don't go by Muhammad Ali? How come you go by Ali? Yeah, no. So, you know, first of all, thank you for having me on the show, Dr. Fran. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. So I, you know, when I grew up, a lot of um, teachers and, you know, whenever they do roll call and they call, they call out your name, when they pronounce Muhammad Ali, when it's together, a lot of times they have a hard time pronouncing it. And so I was finding it that people had a very difficult time pronouncing my name. And just to make it easier for people, which I know sounds ridiculous, I just dropped Muhammad and it's just Ali. And so um, I find it easier. So they have a hard um, time shorter. saying Muhammad if it's not with Ali. Like if it's with Ali, they say Muhammad Ali, but you take it with the Ali. And then it's right. Like Muhammad. a lot of times people would kind of pronounce it as Muhammad Ali or like something like that. Like it would, they, would do it, they would read it as it's, as it's written, you know, and yeah. it's, it's sometimes difficult for people. So um, not to mention every time I talk to anybody, the first thing they want to talk about is Muhammad Ali, like the boxer. And it's almost every single time an icebreaker. You grow up with that icebreaker in every new conversation. You're, ob- you know, you tend to be like, oh, you know, what? I just want to not talk about that once in a while. And so, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, it's all, it's in every new conversation, Muhammad Ali is, is, is always a talking point. And then I had to do it again to you. I, even, even now, no, I had to do it again to you. Hey, um, I haven't done it for a while, so it's great. You know, the the reason I brought you on the show is because um um had you come back is because the uh the marketing is um you know, you know, they're down thirty eight percent. And right. um my gosh, um if if you got a lot of old customers and they're afraid of catching COVID, I mean, um I totally get the fact if you're thirty and under that, you know, this doesn't concern you. Uh, but if you're sixty five and over, uh, you know, it concerns you. And those are the people that need all the dental work. I mean, uh, right. if, if you got a practice with a lot of perio and implants and full mouth reconstruction, right. it's not thirty year old yoga instructors, you know. It's right. old people. Um, right. and they're scared and um, they're not coming in. So I thought, well, if a bunch of people are falling off your schedule, um, you shut up your advertising. And the reason I wanted you to come back on because uh, I'm afraid to ask, but you remember the the last um, stock market, 94 to the Y2K, that bubble? Yeah. And that popped in, in 2000. I'm afraid to ask, but how old were you in 2000? So I was actually 11 years old. 11 oh, years old. oh, thanks for ruining my day. But um, yeah. What Michael Dell showed the world, it blew my mind. I mean, I had an MBA at the time, blew my mind. When the economy crashed, he didn't double, he didn't triple, he quadrupled Dell's advertising with this campaign called, um, you got a Dell or kid, you got a Dell. Uh, Do you remember that uh, campaign? And uh, he maintained his numbers because right. he did a fourfold increase in marketing. So then right. you start looking at the, the dental numbers and the ADA first is saying that, you know, we're down about uh, 38% or 30%. And then um, um, you, there's a lot of mixed numbers because I just uh, podcasted the uh, um, CEO of Septicane because he does 90, 85, 90% of the world's um, anesthesia. And I can't do a filling on a tooth if I don't numb it up. And he says he's actually back to uh, mainline. And right. he says that everybody's saying it's 30% down because when you are closed for two months, like I was, uh, we had to close from uh, St. Patrick's Day to uh, Cinco right. de Mayo, 
there's only there's only 12 uh, months in the year so two out of 12 right man. you got to be down 16 percent right. because you had two donuts um right. and some of the dso people say they're back to numbers but a lot of them are trying to uh impress wall street or other people or whatever but right um right but now there's people uh, saying that we're down 38 percent. so i wanted to do a michael dell thing and ask you point blank do you think these dentists can market their way out of this downturn well, actually, now that you mention it, um, so if you look at Google Trends, so Google openly publishes their trends for what, you know, what at what frequency are specific keywords being searched. So actually, with the exception of the lockdown, of course, March, April, the amount of people that are looking for a dentist, the word dentist near me, Invisalign, implants, these terms are actually being searched more today than they were being searched this time last year. That means more people right now are looking for a dentist. It's not to say that, you know, people, um, you know, patients are, are down because of, you know, dentistry being dead or pe not people not looking for dentists. Most of the dentists that are having empty schedules or having a hard time filling up their schedules are having a hard time because their hygiene is out of the picture, right? So they're used to having a hygiene situation go on. And, and in that lockdown in March, April, essentially what happened was they had a big backlog that kind of kicked in in July, August. And so what happened in September, October, November, a lot of that hygiene, the six month recall kind of fell off the map. And because of that, that's why a lot of people have empty schedules. It's not because they're not acquiring new patients, more so as they're not doing a good job of reactivating their existing patients or getting their patients back in. And so um, that's kind of what we found at Added is that um, actually people, more people are looking for a dentist. And so I, I'm kind of with, you know, Dell on that. You got to go more aggressive when, when things get tough. And, and, and another uh, theme set up I want to talk about before you uh, start talking is, um, is basically how, um, you know, I've always saying that dentistry, um, they, they market to get patients in the front door and mm -hmm. they got the back door wide open. And, you know, I, I, I've been harping on this forever because um, I always did an exit interview on the last dentist on the new patient. Um, so I mean, we'd start on the phone like, you know, and they'd say, yeah, yeah um, I'd like to schedule a new patient. Oh, did you just move to Phoenix? Where did you move from? And if they said, yeah, I mean, we moved from Beeville, Texas, we'd say, well, did you like your dentist there? I mean, if you went back home, would you stay there? And they'd either say yes or no. And if they said no, um, we, we would write it down. because we, right. we had a pad called Getting to Yes. This is before computers. It was a prescription pad. And it was called right. Getting to Yes. And what are they asking for? And it was the, the low-hanging fruit was, you know, um, they weren't open evenings and weekends. They didn't take the insurance, um, um, blah, 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 blah. Um, but some of it was easily fixable. Like, you didn't have laughing gas. I don't know right. why you think you have to have laughing gas, but I have friends in this town who are endodontist. They only do root canals. And they don't have endodontists. And it's like, dude, I mean, even if you were 99% right, I mean, for one out of 100 people in the 3.8 million metro, don't you think <sighs> you would get it for just just that, th those? Um, it's just uh, amazing. Uh, anyway, I can't find my chart. Uh, but, but basically, um, basically. It's the 80-20 rule. And so 80% of the efforts drive, or 20% of the efforts drive 80% of the traffic, right? So laughing gas is not in the 80% of your traffic is what, where it's coming from. And so I think if a dentist just focuses on that recall, um, as well as reactivating patients that have kind of not come in for eight or nine months, they'd see better traction um, in, in their schedules for sure. So, um, so let's go through the, I, I want to go through the patient journey in your lingo because, you know, I've had you on the show before, so I kind of know how you think and, uh, um, plus yeah. that bald head of yours, we're probably related somehow. I'm not quite sure, <laughs> uh, but we have to be, but you, you always talk about the patient journey related to discovery, acquisition, engagement, and retention. Let, let, let go through that and tell yeah. my homies if you think they're doing good and how they could do better. So to kind of, you know, summarize, you know, first of all, this is the second time I'm on the show and thank you so much for having me two times. And I kind of want to walk you through the journey of how Addits evolved since then and how it affects those four journeys in, in, in the patient experience. So when I first, you know, we talked two years ago, we strictly focused on online marketing and that consisted of, you know, getting patients for dentists. Um, and many times marketing was very scary for dentists. It was the unknown. And so we kind of came in and offered this guarantee where we would, you know, listen to the calls, track the scheduled appointments. And until we didn't show a 
certain amount of patients book, we wouldn't charge our fees. And so that's why it's called a patient booking guarantee. Addict grew a lot since then. Very much thank you to you um, because a lot of people heard of us through Dental Town. And so we've had many customers. I think we scaled from having 50 to 80 customers then to about 750 today. And so through the time that I've worked with so many dentists, I mean, you talk to dentists all day, you go to conferences, you talk to in groups and sessions, you come and learn so many problems that dentists are having in their practice. And most of that was associated to this patient journey. We can get someone to book an appointment, but, you know, making sure that the patient had a proper, you know, a very easy way to scheduling into the schedule. So at Addit, we kind of revolutionized the entire journey, focusing on the full picture. So we offer the online marketing, right, which is your website, your SEO, building your reviews for the acquisition side. So when someone, sorry, for the discovery side. So when someone goes online, they look for a dentist, your website, your reviews, your ads, that's what show, like your social media presence and things like that. Then we focus on the acquisition side, which was we introduced scheduling, which allow, you know, we integrate with some of your, you know, popular practice management softwares like Dentrix, EagleSoft, Open Dental, and essentially allow patients to book based on real-time availability. They can actually book an appointment based on the availability that you have in your schedule. It populates directly into your software. So that e makes it easy for us to schedule appointments based on real-time availability. When that appointment is booked, we introduce a texting software that would give that patient a text message confirmation saying, hey, this appointment's been booked. We introduce patient forms, which allows them to do their COVID screening right from their phone, from that text message, right? And then they get reminders for that text message. And you have an entire texting dashboard where you can text that patient all the way to the time they show up and, of course, more. Um, and then, of course, we, you know, kept focusing on that patient journey from in the engagement process, which included, you know, your, 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 your voice, meaning talking with customers, call tracking, phones, communication, um, like I said, the texting, the reminders and all of that into eventually when the patient checked out, reactivating that patient in six months via emails, via recalls and, and things like that. And basically circling that patient right back into acquisition, engagement, and reactivation. So the journey, as you said, was for us is discovery, acquisition, engagement, and then retention and reactivation. So um, did, did we kind of said it was discovery, uh, acquisition, engagement, retention. Re reactivation is the, is the word we use for the last one. So reactivation. Not, not retention, patient. not retention, but reactivation. Reactivation, exactly. And so uh, right now with this pandemic, essentially because of April, March, April, May, that reactivation in many of our practices are dead. Um, because revenues are down, patient practices are not spending in, in, in they're not doubling down like Dell, like Dell did, right? And so they're not advertising. Um, and they're, they're, it's not that they're not booking patients because people are not looking for a dentist, but because their reactivation is dead. And so um, patients are all that, you know, that funnel. And so now you have to use things like mass texting and email campaigns to get these people back into your practice. Um, we recently had a, had a practice out in Denver, Colorado. They sent out a text message to all their patients and booked 220 patients in one week. It's not that, you know, the patients are sitting in their patient you know, um, in their, in their patient database, they just need to reactivate them. And so, um, that's a very critical part right now to that patient journey that, that a lot of dental practices are, are missing out on. So. so just in, um, other people, you know, so you, you call it the four stages of dental, the four stages of the dental patient journey are, cause I know back in the day, some people called the six stages, awareness, engagement, decision, service, loyalty act, you know, there's all kinds of those, but um, would it be fair right. to call the four stages of the dental patient journey are discovery, acquisition, engagement, and reaction. Reactivation. And reactivation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Discovery is like getting found, right? So when someone looks up dentist near me on search results, do they actually see you? If they see you, what are your reviews? Um, are you running any kind of promotions? Do you offer, right now I heard, um, I read an article on, on Yahoo Finance that Invisalign treatments are at an all-time high right now because people are getting cosmetic procedures done while they're sitting work from home. So it's like if someone's looking for Invisalign, are you, are, do you have anything about Invisalign? Do you have a promotion? Do you have content before, after, stuff like that, right? And so making sure you have the right, things showing online for patients to find. So discovery is key. Acquisition consists of making sure that your scheduling is on, on point, right? So a lot of times, you know, practices are not very good at answering phone calls. Um, they don't have the right coaching, like, you know, giving multiple uh, time availability in, in their schedule and, and doing things like that. And so we kind of focus on coaching your front desk and automating your scheduling. Um, and that's that acquisition piece. And then of course, engagement. Well, wait, okay, let's, so, so what's the shortest way to say discover? Discovery is about getting found online. 
Right, exactly. And, okay. so, and it's, so acquisition is about? Uh, getting them to book an appointment. Getting them to book? An appointment, yeah. Um, is that, could that be also a closing? I mean, some right. some receptionists, right. they just, they don't close. They don't I, close, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you could have an hour-long sure. conversation with them and they'd still never ask you to, uh, to come in. Absolutely. We have a lot of horror stories that we, we hear at Audit, and you know our customer success team works really hard to kind of coach our customers on, on what they can improve on. So we have this technology that kind of screens through all your calls and, and kind of finds cue points on, on which appointments don't book. And so our, our success team kind of goes in, listens to these calls, and finds out certain things your, your staff can improve on. Um, you know, the other day, uh, we, had, um, we had a dentist pick up a phone call after hours, and they were so rude to the patient. The patient needed to reschedule their appointment, and the dentist was upset at that patient because they had to reschedule. Straight up said, "You know what? Don't even show up." Things like that we've seen like horror stories in these conversations. We've seen front desk pick up the phone call like they're picking up their cell phone. Hey, who is this? Instead of saying, "Hi, this is so and so dentistry. How can I help you?" You know, and so um, simple things like you know being knowledgeable about the subject matter. Hey, how much do you charge for crowns? Okay, well, what's the problem? What, what what kind of pain are you experiencing that you need a crown? Oh, well, this is what I'm experiencing. What do I do for X Y Z? And so there's a lot of a lot of improvements that a lot of times dentists, you know, they're so busy in their operatory working their patients that they don't have an opportunity to, to coach their front staff on how do you actually pick up the phone? How do you answer that call? How do you make that person feel comfortable? And how do you convert them into an actual booking on your calendar? Right. And so Addit kind of steps in here and focuses on that part of the journey and 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 tries to get your staff to become better. And so and we guarantee it because if you don't book the patients. Um, at it doesn't charge you anything. So, you know, your, your front desk's performance is heavily, we're heavily dependent on that. And so we absolutely focus on, on improving, um, that part of the, the patient journey. So. Okay. You, you want to go through them all, then I'll come back with all my, uh, um, follow-up questions or, uh, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little slow. No, no, no. If I'm going too fast, please. No, 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 no. Me. I'm just, I'm just, uh, anal. I'm just more into the details. I mean, the devil's in the details always. It's, it's for uh, sure. Absolutely. It's always Absolutely. A, but um, so you did uh, discovery. You talked about acquisition. So next is uh, engagement and, or, and, um, um, reactivation. Right. And engagement's a pretty big piece, right? So Addit came out with this really cool software. So it's an all-in-one software, right? So in this one platform, you can text your patients, you can send them reminders. Um, we have a phone system that's coming out in January. So essentially your phone lines would run through Addit. You know, it's a voice over IP system. So like when a patient calls, you can kind of see who's calling in, you know, what's their information, when's their next appointment, do they have any siblings that haven't scheduled an appointment, do they have an upcoming birthday, you know, all these things about the patient, you can kind of engage with them, you can text with them, you can set up all your communication to go efficiently to that patient. And so we kind of set that up for you with added. Um, and so that whole process is within our platform as well. So essentially, uh, a, a dental office should have everything in this one platform from, you know, the, the, the discovery, the acquisition, the engagement and the reactivation. And so we kind of bring all that piece together in the engagement part as well. And so that's kind of what we do there. A big part right now in, in this entire COVID shenanigan is the is patient forms, right? Pre-screening, touchless check-ins and things like that. So we kind of covered that in our platform as well as part of the engagement process, right? Like how does your how does your patient fill out their COVID pre-screening forms? How do they fill out their new patient forms? How do you manage that form when you're when you're you know when you're when you're treating them and how do you see what they filled out for their medical history and things like that? Is it all paper based or are you running digital? All of that's digital within the Ada platform. So we kind of centralize all of that into our platform so you can kind of get an idea or, or you know, centralize everything into one, one place for your staff. And so um, that's kind of what we do with the engagement point. And then um, comes the, the reactivation. So any questions for the engagement? Dr. Oh, Friend, my God. I got so many pass. questions. No. Um, um, yeah. No, no, go ahead. Go, go, go next. Okay, so the reactivation part of that is the emails and, um, you know, getting that patient to come back in when they're due for their next cleaning or they're due for their recall, um, if they're due for any kind of any kind of follow up treatment. So getting that patient back into your schedule um, at it helps you within the same platform with all of the emails and and text message reminders. And so we kind of do all that in one place. And so it's it's really been a full circle approach, right? Like we, we were really good at getting patients to practices, but they were having so many more problems and they were having to hire five different softwares to do, you know, essentially take care of their practice. So we really work to kind of centralize all of this. And I know it's a lot, but, you know, 
running a dental office isn't simple, right? So we kind of help with that entire process from the beginning to end. Well, to tell you how difficult it is, I mean, like say on Dental Town for, um, from 1999 to before the pandemic, we always had uh, free classified ads with about 1,000 dentists selling their practice and about mm-hmm. 4,000 um, help wanted jobs for dentist associates. And right. now it's 2,000 dentists selling their practice and only 1,000 jobs available. So basically all the dentists over 60, you know, that uh, never divorced and uh, they, uh, they just said, you yeah, know, I'm not, I'm not de- dealing with this. I'm cashing out. I'm selling it. I'm out of here. And right. then the, um, with the decrease in demand, the uh, private practice dentists let their associates go. They, you know, if you're down 30, 38 percent you certainly don't need to have an associate especially if you have a guaranteed minimum base which you have to have if you're visible because uh you know they we've already seen the scenario play out with uh, mechanics and plumbers where you know they only pay them straight commission and then the guy's got a family to feed and starts telling grandma that he can't fix her air conditioner needs a new one Um, and so so you can't pay someone a guaranteed base pay of four five six hundred a day when you're down 30 percent so my gosh it's 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 tough time out there and uh, it is. It and is. so if you open up your practice you're down a third you know old school howie first thing i go back to is michael dell whose dad was an orthodontist did you know that right. yeah no i did not know that and that's, his brother was an ophthalmologist and i i met him at the tda way back in the day but while it was just oh, yeah. starting to get going i think i, I think uh, dell went public i think in 94 and i was lecturing i think at tda in like 90 and um, he, tell, he told the story. We were laughing so hard we were crying because, you know, here's this, you know, orthodontist and his son's going to be an ophthalmologist. And here Michael right. drops out of college in six weeks, comes home with all the stuff. And his dad's like, what the hell? And well, why did you quit? And he goes, well, dad, I, I, I met all my teachers and every one of them was an idiot. Uh, can I move into the garage and start a business? And he says, he claims that him and his wife cried themselves to sleep that night because they never knew what they were going to do with that boy. And uh, I guess that's what it's like raising a billionaire. Uh, but, um, you know, so my, my first instinct is if you're down 30%, dude, you got you to gotta start act like you're running for mayor. I mean, by the way, this is being, um, we're taping this on election day. That I got my sticker on the, uh, right. um, I, I voted. voted. And yeah. I'm so, uh, um, <clears throat> I don't even want to go there because, you know, as an American, every election I've ever <laughs> voted in my entire life was like deciding if you want to die from heart disease or cancer. Uh, <laughs> sir, would you like your leg amputated above or below the knee? <laughs> And I, I can't believe with 331 million people, you think I'd be picking between Batman, Robin, and Wonder Woman. And it's always, you know, like, seriously? That's, that's our same. only choices? Uh, right. but, um, but, um, on, but again, um, you know, we have this pandemic, and we might be having a big pandemic economic contraction. Um, I've seen a contraction right. about every 10 years. We were due one a year before this pandemic, and the pandemic's only making it much worse. So... I I seriously think it's going to be equally rough sailing all for the next 2021. There's not going to be some miracle vaccine in January and we're all back to normal. So it's going to be a long adjustment period. I think the new normal is going to be at least um, all of 2021. In fact, the most optimistic, smart people I know in economics um, are saying as good as it can get, maybe dentistry will be down 20% next year. Um, if, if you're thinking it's down 38%, it's going to close the year at 38. Let's round that to 40. Um, right. And then next year is going to be down 20. Um, they're going to have two years. And if you're, um, and I was talking about election because, you know, to me, marketing is just getting out and running for mayor. I mean, what do, right. what do these people do running for mayor? I mean, they get out and press the flesh. I went to every house on Saturday right. and Sunday and, and knocked right. on the door and shook hands. And yeah, two out of three people thought it was absolutely weird and strange and right. didn't like it and gave me bad body language. But I'm not going to let them mess with my mission because the one out of third is standing there in his underwear at the door going, like, yeah, I'm right here. and I got right. my flashlight out and, and, um, uh, direct mail. Um, I'm scared about yuppies and millennials because, um, <laughs> they call junk mail junk and think it should be legal. I get it. They're on Instagram. They, they grew up with a, they were born with an iPhone in their hand, but right, when you got right. an implant practice case, I, I'm not sure all the 60, 70, 80 year old grandmas that need implants and bridges are on Snapchat and Instagram. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't know. That's my the most. Fi- 
I'm sorry, I can't, but my yeah, mom yeah. is on Facebook more than I am. And so my mom's on social media more than I am. And, and I mean, she's 70 years old. So, I mean, I feel like these, these, I mean, you'd be surprised. These, these people in their 60s and 70s are spending more time on social media than your average millennial, which I'm a millennial. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and I, I don't know. I feel like. Well, like then I'm going to point blank ask you, do you think direct, I mean, we, we both agree. Can we all agree that yellow pages are dead? Yeah, for sure. Yellow. I mean, that's it's yeah. beyond. Okay. So, dead. so, so it's that's that dead. that's completely dead. That that's the VCR. I get it. That's, that's the A track. I get it. But yeah. direct mail. Do you think I like direct, direct mail? mail? I like direct mail. Yeah, I, I always recommend direct mail. See, direct mail works depending on where you're located. It it really really does, um, especially suburbia suburban it's also about how you run your direct mail right like if you're running a promotion on there that's like it's like you know when you used to get like uh, my mom used to get like a a, a packet of coupons right i mean right. if they didn't have coupons in that packet she wouldn't cut them out and like go to the store with a coupon right it's the coupon was what got her to look through that that whole packet or the newspaper and same thing here when you're running mailers if you don't have a good promotion to kind of pull that patient from there you know, or stop them from throwing it in the trash, they're not going to respond. And so everything's got to have a hook. You know what I mean? In advertising, you got to have a hook, like what gets you in. And so every campaign, every successful campaign, the Dell campaign, you said it yourself, you were trying to remember what the, what the, what the, you know, what the, what the wording was, but it's, it's, you got to have a hook. So uh, we, yeah. We, yeah, we actually recommend a new patient exam which is super controversial with most, most dentists that we speak with because they all are like, Hey, I run a high end dentistry. I don't want to run a new patient exam. And we almost always say, Hey, you got to get a hook. I mean, regardless of what that patient is making, you got to throw out a new patient exam to get that patient in. And so the same thing goes for your mailers for sure. Have you, have you tried anything else besides that? Well, that, that? that campaign was called, uh, uh, I would just want to say that my dude, you're getting a Dell. Um, gosh, uh, um, yeah. Like say all, all the old people um, remember that show, um, right. and, and the guy, the guy that did it became uh, famous, Ben Curtis, because I mean, when some when some billionaire uh, puts your face on the TV eighty gazillion times, I mean, he actually right. uh, he actually became a famous guy in and of itself. Uh, some kid from uh, Tennessee, uh, but um, so so you're talking about okay, so in the old school, you you set a hook, um, you know, they called it a an economic incentive. And right. I remember when I started um, my practice in 87, I mean, um, as advertising all new. So let's go back a little bit before that. Um, it was illegal for physicians, dentists, and, and uh, lawyers to advertise right. all the way up to 1973. And it was two lawyers from right here in Tucson, Arizona, 90 miles down the street, that said, dude, it's free speech. And they went all the way to Supreme Court and they overturned it. So they overturned it in 73. But the culture was already set in, in right. stone. And when I got in 87, you think 15 years later they would have figured it out. But just a few people had figured it out. And right. when I opened up, I had a full page ad in the yellow pages. And all the negatives about it were from dentists. I mean, right. they'd snare, man. I can't believe you're doing that. I mean, if you if you had prostate right. cancer, would you find a oncologist out of the yellow pages and I'm like and I'm right. just sitting there thinking god I hope you keep these thoughts going for another 20 years <laughs> and then when everybody realized how obvious it was um, right. it became it became useless um you know it was right. just um right. it, it was not a return on investment and right. um so then um an economic incentive it's the same thing um you know this keeps going around and around you know right. um some people were doing a 99 dollar new patient exam clean exam and x-rays right. right um then some people would bait and switch that and say oh well that's for bite wings but you need an fmx on a pano and then right you know it's, right. it's always weird right. but but would you say um the hook is definitely an economic incentive that price matters. And if your advertising piece doesn't have an economic incentive, a deal, um, cause some dentists just want to go out there and tell them that they got their FAGD, their MAGD, they're all, all right, this stuff right. like that. And, and you got to realize that when, when you see the real estate ads, I mean, the real right, estate ads right. got like 29 letters behind and it doesn't mean yeah, anything to yeah. me. It might as well be, you know, um, you know, some, transcript i mean it means nothing right. and right. and and when i in this true story i cannot believe this happened to me but i was so proud when i got my fagd uh, that i put on my chart and i put all of the office you know i earned my fagd and the the first person that ever said anything was about an 80 year old lady and she goes i see you're a fagda 
And I'm like, oh my God, really? Oh, so I mean, so they they don't know any. So if you're, what I'm trying to say is, right. if you just try to brand that, hey, I'm all that in a bag of chips. Right. Um, right. Well, does that know, does that work, or or is it really more an economic incentive? So what I tell my patients right now is like, where you go to school and your degree absolutely means nothing. Like right now, to right. a person that looks for a dentist online, they could go to you even if you didn't have a degree, so long as you have the reviews. Like that star rating on Yelp and Google matters more to that patient than where you went to school. You know, my sister's an optometrist. And, you know, when you go into her office, she'll have all of her certificates on her wall. And I'm just thinking like, that's great and everything, but that patient's probably never going to read it. And two, they're never even going to look it up before they book that appointment. And so that's all great and everything. But today patients don't understand. You got to speak their language, right? Um, as for economic incentive, it's well, tough. But I had, had one thing to what you said. Um, you know, I got another right. story for that. I had my degree up there and you know when I brought it down? Because after the first year or two, the only three people that looked at the degree and figured out that I went to UMKC Dental School, the, this is their comment. You went to UMKC Dental School? And I'm thinking they're going to think, wow, that's a really good school and that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Kansas doesn't even have dental school. And they go, my sister's roommate's cousin's brother went to UMKC. <laughs> and I'm like, right. well, howdy, freaking hell. You know, I mean, so you're right. No, no right. one, no one. Now, it, that, now right. that, it's not, it's same in medicine. When you go to the emergency room, no one cares what degree you went. But lit lawyers, it's their whole culture. It's their whole pedigree. So if, right. if, if I was coaching a young kid and wanted to go to law school, I'd say, yeah, do anything to get to the best brand name because right. since – everything they do is insane anyway. They, they just yeah. have to rely on their, their uh, brand. But what were you saying? For sure. Before I for interrupted sure. with that stupid story. I swear, no, no, it was great. No, it's a very valid point. Um, economic incentive wise, it really depends on where you're located. So we have customers that are in Canada and Alberta. We have some customers in Massachusetts, depending on where you're located, you can't always run the promotions that you just mentioned, right? Like a new patient exam. Um, but what oh, really? Because like, even the states have. I knew a lot of other countries. That I I never felt so sick in my life was when I came out with the thirty day dental MBA. It was in ninety eight, and you know, yeah. it was selling it all around the world, and and people yeah. were doing what I said, and then got arrested in Hong Kong. Didn't yes. know that was illegal. Another one was I think two were from Romania, and yeah. and I thought it was just in other countries this was out right. of line. But but it, but right. with inside the United States, is there much variance of what's legal for the fifty states? No, there's not a lot. Um, there's there's sometimes the insurances do frown upon running a new patient exam if you're in some of the states in the Northeast. Um, but there isn't anything that's like illegal in, in means of the ADA. Um, you do have to charge your copays, right? So if you have a copay for a procedure, you definitely need to charge that. So if, if, if your promotion at any time infringes on that, you might have some problems, right? And so that's the, that's the only thing to keep in mind. Um, but, you know, sometimes practices don't want to run an incentive. And so there's two, there's two ways to go here. So first you have things like, you know, free teeth whitening for life. I actually have a, a practice that's not too far from where I'm located in Paraland and they run a free practice, uh, free, free teeth whitening for life. And they get a lot of patients from that. Um, I see other people run promotions on free consultations and visa lines, you know, braces. When you're, when you're advertising braces, it comes really well when you advertise it on a cost per month. So, Hey, braces, $80 per month. And so having a hook that gets patients in is very, very key. Like you mentioned, sometimes they'll do a new patient exam and that patient comes in and they're like, Oh, well, this is only, you know, for this x-ray and you need a full x-ray and that's going to be this amount. And that definitely, you know, burns the patient a little bit, but what we've seen, you know, when you, when you compare yourself to some of the biggest DSOs and I'm and ad advertises for a couple of DSOs that are, are pretty large. And we've seen that people who practices that offer promotions, regardless of what their furniture looks like, regardless of where they went to school, regardless of how much money they put into their practice or their doctors, they generate more revenue per patient because their systems processes are proficient. It has nothing to do with the dentist, has nothing to do with the practice and the chandelier in the front. And so I've come to realize, so a lot of practices we'll speak to, they'll be going up against an Aspen Dental or, you know, a Castle Dental. And they'll be like, oh, but they're not great quality. They don't do good work. You know, I, you know, I ran my own practice. Da, da, da. They're generating more revenue per patient, Dr. Fran, than that dentist usually is. And that's because it doesn't have to do with the promotion. It doesn't have to do with, you know, your chandelier. It has to do with 
your processes, your treatment coordinator, your ability to diagnose and 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 present your your treatment plan. And so, um, we just want to give our dentists a chance to give their treatment plan to as many patients as possible. And so, we really really focus on getting a really good hook and getting patients into the practice. So, so I just want to uh, remind everybody because um, we, we got a lot of kids watching the show. I mean, it's uh, you know a fourth of them are still in dental kindergarten school, and they might not know what a dental co-payment is they don't they didn't ever thought about it that it was illegal but it is highly illegal um it's because you know like um we talk about uh, insurance is an actuarial risk analysis versus moral hazard i mean so right. i remember when france um you know their best idea was that if you uh, a national program that if you had lower back pain where you were too couldn't work um that your old employer had to give you 80 percent of your regular pay oh, in, wow. in, until your back works and out of nowhere 10% of all the French people all of a sudden had so much lower back pain that they could right. no longer work. Okay, right. so that's why we always say that the patient has skin in the game. To this day, France, they still haven't figured out. They don't have um, co-payments in their uh, socialized medicine. And, right. you know, they, they talk about the benefits. You know, Canadians will say, well, my grandma had a bypass, didn't cost her a nickel. So, so what, are you, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say to throw away all economics, price doesn't matter, co-payments don't matter? I'm pretty sure 200 years of economic research has proved that to be a real thing, whether you like it or not. But they, they all run deficits. They all run budget deficits. Right, and when, right. you, when you make someone, I mean, why should I pay 100% for your artificial knees if you're not going to pay 10%? And, right. and, and I, would, I would actually be happy with 5%. And that would just make them look at the bill so you get rid of fraud. But when, right. they, when they actuarial risk how much this insurance is going to cost, like say a crown, they, they did 100% coverage for clean exam and x-rays, 80% fillings and endo because, you know, um, whatever. But when it comes to a luxury item, like a crown, a root canal, whatever, they only cover half. And, right. um, and when you start waiving those co-payments, their math goes weird. Their claims go too high. They right. underbid it. They lose money. And right. dentists go to jail. And let me clarify that about going to jail. When you do that within your state, it's usually two people who live in the same state. They don't want to have you know, a feud going on the rest of their life. It's usually right. just a legal thing or a gentleman's right. uh, whatever. But when that crosses the state line, now they bring in the feds, and that's how they brought down Al Capone was mail fraud. They couldn't get him <laughs> on all the people he murdered, but they got right. him, They packed him away on mail fraud, and they do yeah. the same thing with Dennis. And that's why you never do business with the mafia. You would never do business with Al Capone, and you don't do business with Medicaid uh, or right. Medicare because it, you know if they find any mistake, they're going to kidnap you and put you in a cage. And they're completely psychotically insane. And then the, the, the guy, the lawyer who just got out of school that put, gets you in jail, makes a newspaper, he'll get promoted. And his, his goal is to someday be the attorney general. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. you know, so I only do business with people who don't believe in kidnapping. And that, I, I think that's a bare minimum. Like, I, you know, if you're, right. the, if you're kind of into that kidnapping thing, I just, you know, there's 8 billion people to be a friend with. Um, so the insurance thing, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold your feet to the insurance because I thought Groupon was a race to the bottom. Sometimes these doctors right. that start getting into coupons. Um, the person only came in for the yes. cleaning exam and x-rays because it was $99. Right. And yes, then, yes. and then, when you go back to your regular fee at two fifty, they're onto the next coupon. Do you think Groupon built a culture of the race to the bottom, or do you think it? Yes, yeah. you do. So Let's talk about. So Groupon, is it still a thing? So, well, I was all up for the mailers, right? So I'm not trying to say I'm biased or anything. So I'm, I'm all up for what works. Groupons don't work, and the reason Groupon doesn't work is because you're tar So first of all, ninety five percent of patients that come to a practice come from within a three to five mile radius. Okay. Say, okay, say that again. I'm a slow note taker. 95% of patients that come to a practice come from a three to five mile radius. Okay. So if they're coming from a three to five mile radius, the problem with Groupon is that the type of demographic that you're attracting to that platform are people who are looking for a promotion. When you're advertising for a dentist, right? When someone's looking for a dentist in their area, they're looking for a dentist. People on Groupon are looking for a promotion very different mindset. What's the intent of the buyer? So the intent of the buyer is to just get a promotion. They're going to drive cross country. They're going to drive all over town just to come to you and maximize that promotion. 
And that's what the problem with Groupon is. See, like I mentioned earlier, practices don't make, and like you said it, right? You, you acquire a patient, you let them out the back door. The idea for marketing and advertising is not to just get the patient in and make money on that first treatment. It's to reactivate them and manage your hygiene, right? Get them in every six months. And so with the Groupons, those patients never come back because they drove too far for that promotion. And now when you're trying to get them back, because 95% of patients are not willing to drive more than three to five miles, you're never going to get them back into your practice. And so it's just, you're targeting the right, I mean, the wrong personnel. Um, and so we, we don't recommend Groupon. We don't have a single customer in 800 customers that can happily tell us Groupon works. I have customers that vouch for Yelp. I have customers who vouch for obviously Google, Facebook. I have people who vouch for mailers. I have people who vouch for, you know, local publications, billboards, TV ads, radio ads, everything. I've never seen a successful practice with Groupon. So, well, that's, that's uh, I mean, how much more um, do they need to know? You've, you've never seen one. By the way, if you're another, um, some dentists might be thinking, um, um, why did Howard bring him on a second time? Uh, to tell you how um, successful this guy is, one easy way to check with a company, um, a lot of times I'll get a promotion, an email, something, right. and I'll go look him up on LinkedIn, and they have one yeah. employee. Um, yeah. You have 315 employees. I have 50. You're, if I'm a bag of chips, you're right. six bags of, uh, of uh, Not at all. Not but at all. But you, you said when you first came on the show uh, two years ago, um, how many, um, let me see where I wrote that down. Um, um, how many um, did you say you had when you first came on the show? And then how many do you have now? About two and a half years, we probably had somewhere around 100, 100 customers, about 70 to maybe 150 customers. Um, so in about two and a half years, we've grown quite, quite. And you actually, I, I, I came on Dental Town two and a half years ago. So it's actually a, bit, a little bit longer than that. And so, um, so we've grown quite a bit. I mean, how many customers do you have today? How many, how many dental clients so do you have today? Would you we guess? have about, we're somewhere around 800 customers. Um, wow. You know, yeah. And, and what makes, you know, at it, and I haven't even talked about our best selling point. So the thing about added is, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not invested by any publicly traded company. Um, you'll notice that, you know, when you work with other companies, a lot of times that there's, sorry, not publicly traded, they're not invested by a VC fund or a private equity company. We don't, we haven't raised any kind of crazy money at Adit. It's simply because we're, we're more owned by the people who work at Adit. And so we're, we're very small in that respect. So even though we have 300 employees, we're not funded. Um, we don't have to, you know, fit any shareholders expectations. We're all about helping the dental office grow. We're all about practice growth. And so, you know, we, we've really taken this full circle. Instead of looking at what is our bottom line, what's our P&L, how much money are we making? Our focus has always been on how are we helping the dental office? And that's why we came out with this entire platform. Recently, we started offering, because of COVID, we actually offer any one of our modules completely free of charge. That means a dental office can come and sign up and add it. That's why we're getting more customers. That's why I don't even know the frequency amount because every day we get about 10, 10, 5 to 10 practices that will sign up for our free program. And basically, you can come in and use our reviews um, software. You can come in and use our patient form software. You can use our reminder software. You can use our email platform. You can use any one of our softwares free of charge, no questions asked, no contracts, no commitments, nothing. And so we give a lot of practices these little tools to help them grow, to get them through COVID, to help them get out of, you know, overcome that 38%, right? And if they see value in what we do, then they can upgrade. Our whole platform is 99 bucks a month, Dr. Fran. The whole Whereas thing, the, the whole thing. So why so would you? Our, just, okay, okay. But first of all, if I'm on your website, which I am right now, which is addit.com. If you're driving the monomic device ad advertising, it IT um, technology right. advertising technology. But where would you find that um, economic incentive where you get a free thing for? So do you see the pricing on the menu? Well, should I go to dental first on your vertical dental? Yeah, so we, we focus on dental. 85% of our customers are dental offices. But if you see on our menu, there's a pricing option. So you can just click on that. Okay, now you get to see how dumb I am in real time. Okay, I got it. Pricing, okay, pricing. Promotion valid until November 30. Yes. No contracts, so we, no setup charges, money back guarantee. So is that for no contracts for the promotion or no contracts ever? So it's no contracts for the promotion when you sign up for our technology platform. So if you use any of our products, so you'll notice we'll have products listed there and you can use any one of those products completely free. Okay, let's, let's go through them. First one is positive. 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 Positive yeah, with so a Z, that's cool. Yeah. So that is really cool. Reviews. Yeah. It's what? It's, it's positive it's, it's, for getting reviews. reviews. 
Yeah, it's, a, it's our review software. So we get you reviews with positive. It's pronounced, it's spelled P-O-Z-A-T-I-V-E. Um, and so that's, that's, a, that's, a review, that's a review software. Then you yeah. have the online scheduling. Wait, wait you're, too, you're too fast for this old man, I think. I'm uh, so sorry. I'm sorry. How, I'm sorry how, no. how, how old are you? What year are you born in? I'm, I'm born in 89. I'm 31 years okay, old. Okay, so you're my Eric. My Eric was born in 89. Eric, <laughs> chill. Eric, chill. I, sometimes I have to hold his cheeks and just say, chill. I um, do on, okay, so you were saying earlier about um, um, Yelp reviews, whatever, whatever. Um, again, I, I, I can't be a fake person. I can't be someone I'm not. I mean, I've never seen anybody do a Yelp review. I couldn't imagine... Uh, going to a restaurant and looking online to see if some stranger likes the salad. Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, but um, on these online reviews, is, is that a, a, an age thing? I'm 58. Uh, you're, you and Eric are 31. I mean, do 58-year-olds use Yelp and online reviews? And if so, what went wrong in their life? <laughs> to compare, I don't go to a restaurant if they don't have four stars on Yelp. And so... What about your mom on Facebook? Well, my mom's on Facebook too, right? So my mom and dad, they, they'll look at reviews all the time. And so, really? um, yeah, absolutely. Reviews are a huge right now. It's, it, I mean, yeah, right I know now, they're huge, but I'm just thinking to me, it seems yeah. like they're huge with the millennials and they're huge in the yuppie big city crowds, but I just can't see it being huge in Parsons, Kansas or Beeville, Texas. Hell, when I was in Beeville, Texas, the, the first time I went to, went there when my grand, when uh, Eric moved his family down there, uh, I was so curious what Beeville is named after. And I'm like in the grocery store, H-E-B grocery store. Have you heard that? H-E-B? Yeah, yeah. H-E-B is a huge grocery store. Yeah, and I'm, uh, and I'm, and shit, I must ask every person in the store that we pass in the aisle, um, hey, who, what's Beeville named after? And everybody's like, I have no idea. So, but anyway, so I, I um, it, to me, it just seems like a millennial yuppie thing in San Fran and Manhattan. It just doesn't seem like a Beeville, Texas thing, but you're saying it is. It's definitely for sure, hundred percent. Yeah, reviews are read definitely more by millennials, like to the T, where they're reading exact reviews. You know, um, and I've I've read some horror story reviews on 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 these reviews. By the way, it's it's crazy. Um, but older people will definitely read your reviews, but not so much as on a granular level to just look at what is your. Okay, rating. well, I already know my homies. Um, they're they're snowflakes, man. I mean, they they are even dentists are snowflakes. God, my gosh, sometimes um dentists will post a picture like me. And they'll say, ah, oh, you should have gave a warning, not safe for work. Dude, you're a surgeon. You're, right. you're a surgeon. They, they, I mean, police officers, they see people ran over in cars, fire trucks are using jacks, emergency rooms are sewing people's right. heads back on. And good Lord, you're on a website and you want to not safe for work. I mean, I'm not talking about a B2C website. I mean, this is just dentist. I, I thought you did the blood thing, but I guess not. Um, I mean, they're, um, and, and it's with someone will tell them, I went to Dr. Good, and he should change his name to Dr. Horrible, and th they have a meltdown. Right, and right. it's like, are you yeah. kidding me? Who gives yeah. a shit? I mean, first of all, 110 billion humans have already come and died that we don't even know their name. Um, and yeah, there's only yeah. 8 billion alive today, and you won't meet 7.9 billion of them. How yeah. could you give a flying rat's ass what some online guy said? But, they, okay, so they're going right. to have a meltdown, so. All right. How would you talk them off the ledge? They're on the ledge. They're ready to jump. You know, um, what, what, how do you respond to reviews? Right, to a, to so, a bad one. A big reason why Amazon's as big as they are, Doctor Friend, is because their reviews are legitimate. Like you go on a product, and you can you can really know if a product's good or not based on the reviews. And because of that, a lot of people are willing to take the leap of faith and buy on Amazon. And so, reviews are huge. Any demographic. When you get a bad review and we, we really hear them, like, I mean, I've heard some serious horror stories. The first thing I do is I tell them, reach out to the patient, call that patient and first talk to them about what happened, what went wrong and how, you know, how you can amicably solve that without, you know, that patient, you know, with that patient possibly removing the review. It's absolutely worth it to get that review removed because that one review, everyone reads it. I mean, it's especially if it reads really bad. Um, okay, well, we'll tell them what a bad review is because everybody's got a different idea of bad. I mean, I mean, sometimes dentists are, you know, caught uh, uh, buying a drugs downtown in the middle of the night. Um, you know, right. what, what is a bad review? I mean, I've I've read some reviews where you know patients will complain that you know the patient messed up, they pulled out the wrong tooth. Um, they'll show pictures of them bleeding, about swelling. Um, I've had I've read you know reviews where they're like I, you know they move patients like cattle. 
no, no attention given whatsoever. Um, I've had, I've had, I've had situations where, you know, um, the patient was, the doctor was rude, very aggressive. Um, and then I've, you know, I've got a lot of complaints about front desk staff, you know, just not on top of their game, long wait times, you know, just not messing things up um, and stuff like that. So there's, there's multiple levels of where things can go wrong. When it goes wrong, I always recommend reaching out to that patient, talking to them, trying to get it resolved amicably. If that doesn't work, you want to flag it on Google to see if maybe they did something like mention a, an employee's name or do something that would infringe on Google or Yelp's policies and try to get Google or Yelp to remove it. That works sometimes. I've actually been successful, been successful doing that. Um, then there are some situations where you're just kind of like, you know, uh, you, you just have to, it's just a really bad review and you need to respond to it and they're not going to remove it. And you can, you know, not to get into an online argument with that patient, but just to try to amicably show the world that, Hey, you're very sorry about that experience and you want to work it out with that patient if they reach out to you. And so, um, and how you've learned from that and what you look to improve. And so those are the ways you don't want to get into an argument online. That's never healthy. Um, and so, uh, but bad reviews is the name of the game. Like, I mean, everybody messes up. Everybody has mistakes at it included. You know, we've had our growing pains. Every company has growing pains. Every company has their problems. I mean, everybody. And so it's not the end of the world when you have a bad review. Right. Okay, it's, but, it's a, but I'm going to go know, back because so. you said you, you paused and you said, well, Amazon reviews are actually legitimate. So, okay. So that's positive. What's the right. other side of the equal sign that, that means obviously someone's reviews aren't actually legitimate or you wouldn't have called right. it out. Who's, who's the unlegitimate or the illegitimate um, bastard child reviews? So like, like Galileo, like, you know what Galileo's what? last name is? No, I don't. What is his last Galileo name? Galileo of Galilee. Um, when, when they didn't have a last name, they were they were orphans. So, um, which wow. you know, the religious people call bastards. But yeah, so oh, wow. okay. yeah, so if you didn't have a last name, if you just had a first name, and you were like, I'd be Howard of Phoenix, and you'd be, um, you know, you'd be um, um, Ali of Houston, and yeah. uh, so um, yeah. So anyway, so who's yeah. the illegitimate um, Galileo so, of reviews? So like sometimes what will happen is many, many websites that sell products by themselves, they'll kind of inflate those reviews, right? So like if I go to buy a pair of shoes, for example, and I want to buy them on, on Amazon, and if I go to the original manufacturer's site, there might be negative reviews that they've received, but they remove it from their platform. So you only see the positive reviews, right? Versus on Amazon, you'll see both the two stars, the three stars, the one star, the five star, everything. And so because it's legitimate, no one's fluffing the numbers, it feels real. That's another reason why Yelp is so popular. So doctors hate Yelp, by the way. I, I don't know a single yeah, customer. Yeah. One, yeah, one out of 10 practice will tell you, I hate Yelp. And the reason they hate Yelp is because they'll get someone to leave a review. They'll get 10 people to leave a review and none of them will count, right? And one person leaves a bad review and it's sitting right there at the top. And it's because Yelp's algorithm is so strict that you know they really filter out a lot of the reviews that come in. And and that's why when you go to look for a restaurant, someone's hit four stars, you know, they're good because it's so hard to get that rating, you know? And so the legitimacy of the medium really m makes a difference. And, and Google's definitely improved a lot um, for sure. And so, you know, at po with positive, we're trying to help you on obviously get reviews on Google, Yelp and, and Facebook as well, and so, as well as like health grades, rate MD and, and other mediums as well. So. I always tell Dennis when they're panicking that, you know, if they ever get a really bad negative one star review, remember, the Milky Way only got a one-star review. Right, right. 85% right. of all the planets are binary stars, but not our lonely bastard illegitimate uh, sun. It only has a one-star review. Um, That's only one, one, one sun, right? And, so. But I did read one time um, where a dentist was talking to a patient and called her up with a one-star review, and she actually thought one star was the best. I mean, wow. I mean, because that sounds more normal to me. I mean, you know, you look at one sun, you don't look at two stars. You look at one. Yeah. I would think one star wow. named our sun would be pretty damn good. I haven't uh, but, heard of that one. So she, one. Uh, she never heard of that. Have you organized these reviews to where you could say, you know, the 80-20 rule, they break out a percent wise, right. they fall right. into these categories. Do you have that? Well, the way, well, see 80, like there's two types of practices and I don't know if this answers your question, but I'll mention anyway. So a lot of practices are like, Hey, I want to specifically ask the patients that are, you know, that I know are going to leave me a good review to leave me a good review. And then I'm going to manually ask them. And those practices don't get anywhere because the dentist gets busy and they forget to ask for reviews. Then there are those offices that just set it up on automatic. 
and it automatically texts the patient when their appointment is completed, asking them for a review using positive, right? And so they get this text message that says, hey, thank you for visiting so-and-so dentistry, please leave us a review, and it goes out automatically. The moment you mark the appointment complete in your, in your practice management software. The problem with this obviously is dentists freak out because they're afraid they're gonna get negative reviews. But it's an 80-20 rule, right? So even if, you know, 80, well, and hopefully in, in, in your case, it's a 95% rule, then 95% of your patients would be happy to get, leave you a good review. So it's a volume game. Even if you got 4.5 stars, you, if, if you got 150, 250, 500 reviews, it means so much, much more than having 25 reviews at a five-star rating. Do you see what I'm saying? And so we, we really advocate for, for just setting up automatic, get as many reviews as possible. You might get a couple bad ones in, but in this case, hopefully 90, 95% of them will be positive and you'll have a 4.5 to 4.75 star rating. So that's kind of our goal. Okay. Now this, um, this um, promotion, it says valid until November 30th. It's already uh, November 3. So um, yeah. we scale that 10 days. So this is they, this only good till November 30th. Now, now I'm asking you because my cynical bastard mind's thinking um, that, yeah. you know, you were having a Labor Day sale, 4th of July sale. Even right. though you try to tell everybody, Eric, they'll sell you the same truck. They're going right. to sell you the same F-150 on right. July 5th, dude. They're just trying to create right. a panic to get it close. So is that For more sure. of a just For trying sure. to create a crisis to get doctors say, well, better do it right now. And then December, and then next month, you'll right. uh, extend it to December 30th. Right. Well, I did say you have to have a hook, right? So um, I'm big. We, we do what we preach. So um, we definitely want to create some kind of time time sensitive move, right? So that that's for sure. You know, last time I met with you two and a half years ago, our promotion at that time was we offered a free 30 day trial on our marketing. So you could try out our marketing 30 days free of charge. That was a really cool promotion back then. I still get calls from from practices that are trying to get that promotion two years two years later. And so um, promotions change; they change all the time. And so we just came out with this program in August. Oh, sorry, September first. So we've been advertising for September, October, and now this is our third month. Things change so fast. You know, I understand practices are, are going through troubles. We have voiceover IP coming out in January. That's going to change our rates a lot. So for right now, this promotion is only valid till November 30th, um, just because things, I mean, I've come to realize move too fast in our industry. And so we don't really know where, what we're going to be doing in December. So hey, what um, I don't understand though, um, like I have dentists that call our office and ask if we have a 1-800 number saying, call us back. I'm like, what an ass. I mean, you want me to talk to you and pay for the phone talk to you for free and pay for the damn phone call. I mean, what a cheap. I, I tell everybody in dentistry, get rid of your 1 800 numbers because if the bastard's that cheap, you don't even want to know his name. And I'm right, looking at your right. full motto is $99 a month. I mean, right. my God, you could have a Kool Aid stand one Sunday a month and be able to afford right. it. Who the hell? looks at $99. I mean, I think in chunks and the smallest chunk I can think in is like five grand. I mean, right. so, so does, um, a free module for a month versus the $99 max, is that really have an impact? It's huge. So I told you about five to 10 people sign up per day for the free, right? But we were noticing between 30 to 50% of those people who sign up at some point upgrade to the 99 within 30 to 45 days. The reason for that is because the next vendor that does anything of what we do, usually not all of what we do, usually charges somewhere between 400 or at least 300 to $600. So we're substantially cheaper. And the reason we're cheaper is because we want you to use our platform. We want you to check it out. If you like it, we want you to trust us to build your website and to do your online marketing. And so that's the third package. And so that's kind of where, and we're successful as you, you know, we, we have, we've had a the lot of third packages, the $99 a month, you get the platform. But the third package is, is to do your marketing. Exactly. Yes. And, and, and how much of that, how much of that third package is the coin? Like if I give you five grand, how much is that is for actually buying the advertising on Facebook and print and emails and all that versus just, you know, the cost of you know your cost? Our added fees range anywhere between 600 to a thousand dollars. Um, you can actually look up added on dental town and we've had the same rates that we charged three years ago and there's doctors who talked about it. So you're more than welcome to look it up. Um, it's on dental towns openly published. Um, so we charge anywhere from 600 to $1,200, depending on which package you choose. Um, but we're, we're all about, um, 
you know, we're one of the most cost effective solutions in the industry and, and we take big pride in that. And so, like I said, we're not, we're not public, we're not funded by any VC or private equity fund. So when we, when you join at it, so like if you joined us two and a half years ago, all the technology platforms, Dr. Friend, that we talked about today would be absolutely free to you. So we're just doing it, you know, we're just trying to help you grow. So we're coming out with voice over IP in January. We're coming out with many other technology things next year. And so all these things are usually included and we're doing it for practices so that they trust at it, they use at it, they, you know, help their practice grow in this difficult time. And, and if they, if they choose, they can choose at it for, for growing their practice with online marketing. So. Uh, first of all, you don't have to call me uh, Dr. Ferran. You can call me uh, Howard or Horse. Thank you very whichever, much. Whichever one uh, uh, works best. But I want to ask you about your emotions. Um, how do you, uh, Dentaltown, um, and remember, when I look at Dentaltown, you know, I, the last time I took a 500 level master's course in statistics was just 99, you know? And um, right. the reason the telephone numbers, well, if, if you think we should go do this, call them 1 900 this. And if you think bad, right. 900 that. Right. And they, they, they did this for a long time. They thought they had a bunch of data. Then they found out that, you know, on statistics, how you pick your sample size is more important than the size of right. your sample. And the right. people calling in are such freaking outliers. Well, you know, the person who owns um, um, Facebook, um, his dad's a dentist, Ed Zuckerberg, and he's been on the show three times, and we've talked at oh, length yeah. about this. But only 1% on any social media platform, I don't care if it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Dental Town, 1% start all the conversations and just 9% engage them like, yeah, I agree, disagree. 90% say nothing. So like going to Facebook, I got 300,000 followers on Facebook, but I, 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 by the way, I, a lot of people say blah, blah, blah. Um, I had to give us something up when the pot in the, um, when the pandemic hit and sorry to my 300,000 followers on Facebook, but that, that was just an easy edit. Um, but so on a social media platform, it's the outlier. It's kind of like when you watch a news show. They're going to get two people right. debate. He's yelling for it, and she's yeah. slapping the desk. You know, so they're never right. normal. But how do you personally take a bad review on Dental Town when someone says, um, "No good"? Um, you know, what, what right. do you, how do you do, deal with that? So I did. You know. You know, hit that. Um, so Adit has definitely had its growing pains. Like, I mean, you have to understand going a business from 100 to 800 customers, going from not just doing marketing to introducing a lot of technology. I mean, that's no joke. And doing all that without funding is, is, is extremely, extremely difficult. There's a lot of people on our team that are extremely talented, have worked extremely hard, have had to go through growing pains, made mistakes, made improvements and things like that. And so unfortunately we've had, you know, customers that, you know, experienced bad, had some bad experiences with our product. We didn't do what we promised. And so I always reach out to those customers. Anytime a customer exit added, I almost always reach out to them and talk about what went wrong. And I try to see what I can do to improve. I always come back to say, hey, you know, try us out for a few months free of charge. Let me earn your trust back. And so, um, you know, we, we've definitely had customers upset. We've definitely had customers cancel as with any product and any software um, or any growing company, right? Everybody's had an upset patient. And so not to say that we haven't had upset patients or customers in this case, but we, we definitely work to reach out to them and see if we can improve what we did wrong, um, how we can improve from that bad experience, and, and when they leave us a bad review on Google, it's, it's something that, you know, it definitely hurts, you know, cause we work really hard. We work really hard on our product and it, it definitely hits deep when someone leaves you a bad review, just as you mentioned for your doctors. Right. And so, um, but you know, at the end of the day, we know what we're doing. We know what we're about. We know the value and impact we're not just making in our dentists, but in their patients as well. And so we feel good about what we do and, and we work hard every single day and, and that's what matters most to us. So. But did it, did it, did it bite? make you sad it hurt your feelings are it definitely are hurts definitely it does hurts. it de definitely hurts absolutely every single one of them every sentence hurts for sure because you work so hard yeah. right so if your patient leaves you a bad review the doctor isn't just upset about the patient they're upset because they care right like they work so hard for the reputation to be a good dentist to provide proper care and treatment the same way goes for us is we work really hard right we work really hard to build our products we you know there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the curtains and so when you get that bad review you just can't, you can't, it, it's, it's tough. And so we, we definitely take it to heart. So. I don't know why I'm not hardwired that way. I think it's because I may, I think it comes back to uh, Catholic school. You know, you couldn't do a book report till you did an author search. And, right. you know, if you wrote this, uh, you know, you said, uh, I'm going to do it on Mars and you got this book and it turned out that uh, yeah. she works for Mars candy. I mean, it's, 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 
you know, the nuns always beaded your head, and they did it um, all the way through. Blessed Sacrament, St. Right. Patrick's, Bishop, all the way to create the Jesuits. Like, dude, if you were going to spend two hours on this paper, I'd rather you spend an hour and a half on the author search in 30 right. minutes. Just make sure you get it right. So when I see review, I mean, I don't know you from Adam, and you right. might be batshit crazy. That's why I was really excited when Google was saying online to be reviews. Because just go, you know, I tell people, you know, bring it back to your home. That's where you spend all your time. Hell, you one third of your life right. in your damn bed, another third of life right. in your own house. Imagine sitting around the Thanksgiving table for Thanksgiving, and this aunt said that exact review versus right. this aunt. Well, one of them right. just listening to her talk, you know, she's freaking nuts. And if yeah. I could see the person, I'd have more body language to find out is this guy carry himself well? Does he present himself? Should I listen right. to this guy? But for all you know, it's some guy that's living behind a dumpster and, and you know, it's just, you know, um, I mean, I, right. I, I think I think it's, um, in my opinion, um, I think 25% of the planet is batshit crazy. It's <laughs> one in four. And, oh, it, and if you don't well. believe me, then I want you to invite me I to know, your I house you. for Thanksgiving I and I will, I will write down which one of your crazy aunts are insane. So I if one fourth of your family reunion is insane, uh, so I, I need to know, um, you know, who you are. So since I don't know who you are, uh, oh. last thing I'm going to do is lose sleep over. But so, but remember, so on dental town, when some guy starts screaming something, uh, 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 well, number one, that's one guy. And if you got 300 clients, I would assume you're going to piss off some of them. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Absolutely. You're going to always have upset customers. And and a lot of them are upset for, for different reasons. Everyone has their own goals, propagandas, and, and who knows what's going on, right? So it, 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 everyone, it, there's definitely going to be those who are loud for no reason, as I'm sure you haven't, you know, every dentist has in their practice. And so the worst is when you don't even know them, right? It's just a, a competitor that's just trolling your patients, right? Or, or just writing negative reviews. Those are the worst. And so you can't let it, you can't let it hit deep. You just got to move on. Right. And so, right. Um, but, but we're fortunate to have many happy customers and, and that's what matters most. We have a lot of customers that are bad for us. And so, I mean, we, we know we make an impact. So you just gotta, you know, you, you have your patients that are happy with what you do and you just remember that and you, and you move forward. So. All right. So, um, so then what's, um, um, should we, should we go to, uh, is, is there any threads you want to talk about? Because, so this is the other reason, um, I want you to, to, in your head, um, realize the difference between dental town and all the other social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff like right. that is right. the other ones are they only have one revenue model. They're selling you ads and they're right. trying to engage you and keep you on there a long time. And that's right. why they do that last in first out. It's trying to engage you. And, right, in, and right. on, on news, if it bleeds, it leads. I, I read a um, great study that 88% of all the bills, in the U.S. Congress that were signed by the Congress, the Senate approved, went into law. 88% from 1950 to 2020 for 70 years, 88% were never mentioned in the press. Wow. People, they, yeah. they, they just, they, there's just a few subjects where if you start talking about it, you're right. banging the TV and throwing bananas right. at the screen, and that's what they want. Well, yes. on Dentaltown, it's actually for knowledge. Like, if you go to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at Arizona State University, they use the exact same message board format I do. They do it at every place of science. When I go to the right. CDC, they're not on Facebook. They're on a message board format because right. I can go in and type at it, and even though we have, um, um, we have uh, 6 million posts from 257,000 people, I can pull up every thread that ever mentioned you. So it develops yeah. into your FAQs because 90% aren't ever right. going to post. And usually after a while, there's nothing else anybody can say about something and it goes right. away because right. you know, we're hoping that you're going there to learn something, not just right. to mentally masturbate and be entertained for an hour, you know, <laughs> go to, go to all, you got plenty of platforms to do that. Right. Um, so, right. um, but are there any threads that you um, think are fair and good and that you like on about added or, well, I mean, Dr. Friend, my indus this industry Howard. is pretty Come on, sorry, dude, I'm Howard, your bald Howard, Howard, homie. I, I talked to this. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm, I'm just, so teasing, I'm, I'm just I'm sorry about don't, that. No, I don't, so, I don't even care. I'm just joking you. So, you know, on, on dental, I mean, they're all good. They're all good forums and, and strings. You can more than welcome to look us up. We're, we're a fully transparent company. No matter what you read, we just ask that you give us a chance to talk, you know, talk to add it. Um, there's going to be a couple people who leave you bad reviews without a doubt. And our industry is pretty ruthless. Like our competitors, 
they'll 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 attack us before our possible customers so 90 percent of the people that say anything negative about at it are usually our competitors which is pretty hilarious that includes and any names forms. you can share on dentistry uncensored i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna oh let them attack God. me we're not gonna attack them but the point yeah. is that they there many of them do that and to be honest i don't remember their names because we we focus less on our competition and more on our on our customers right and so um but not just on dental town i mean any kind of form you go on online like a lot of our competitors will just you know trash us because obviously you know they're they're but they're see afraid, i think that's right? a good so, thing because they don't even know where the phrase came from this is how powerful it is i thought right. i grew up my dad was telling me it was pt barnum um right. uh, everything's attributed to uh um oh who's the uh um who's the american folklore guy with the uh the dog and the hook um um but anyway um Benjamin Frank, everybody said, I don't care what you say about me, just get my name right. And, right. you know, it, I'd, I'd rather everybody be bad-mouthing Dentaltown than Dentistry Today, Dental Products Report, JADA, you know. I mean, there's 40 dental publications in the United States. So I would actually rather, in fact, if I could do something where they could only trash talk Dentaltown, I'd have the biggest brand. Mark Twain. Right. Uh, right. Mark, I mean, it's attributed to everyone because everybody uses it because it's so true. I don't care right. what you say about me; just get my name right. And in movies, they always the movie form. I heard Oliver Stone talk about. Well, I right. need a good guy, a hero, right. and a villain. Yeah. And you, right. you remember the Joker? I don't think anybody forgot right. the Joker. And right. uh, but uh, so yeah, um, Howard. I want to mention one thing. The one thing I like about Dental Town is that you don't fabricate the, the content. So. It's crazy. And I shouldn't say this, but since we're talking about it, I'm going to mention it anyways. So in some of these other forums, they actually fabricate the content. Right. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So what, see, when, when they will literally have a vendor or a, a, a dentist post something on behalf of the vendor and then have an entire fabricated list of comments, messages, and things circulate that post to advocate that brand, which is sponsoring that forum and or, you know, Facebook group. And so that's how they're leveraging that, you know, th that that's their form of advertising. It's like, you know how you on Facebook, you have sponsored content. You know, when you go down your newsfeed and you see sponsored ads, imagine seeing posts that don't have the word sponsored on them. You, you wouldn't even know that they were advertising. That can technically be illegal. The best thing about Dental Town is you don't fabricate it, right? So if someone says something bad about it, you don't do anything. If someone says good something good about it, you also don't say anything unless they're a competitor, of course. But if it's a customers or whatever, you don't fabricate any of the content. You don't create posts to talk about, you know, ABC product and then fabricate 15 users coming in and mentioning, oh, I love this product. And so I got to say, that's the best thing about Dental Town is, is you can you can believe what you read, right? Versus some of these other forums, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shady business going on. So right, maybe, right. I'll, I'll mention that. So. Well, thanks. Is I, if I were to be accused of anything, it'd be that the, it's it's an honest format. I mean, and it is. I mean, it's there. I mean, if, I, I don't want you going to go spend one hundred forty five thousand dollars on a on a millennial technology laser for Lanap if right. you if if all the periodontists don't believe it or not. So you need to right, find right. the, the periodontists. You need to and, and and the devil's always in the details. It's not devil's nothing's it, just sure. all good and all bad. Nothing could be good if it wasn't also bad. That's right, the universe. Right. I mean the universe um it is like everybody always talks about the black hole. Okay. Um well right. what's where's the white hole? Probably the right. other side. Uh right. shooting stuff out of it. So um yeah. You can't you can't get to the good unless you experience the bad, right? So you can't you can't build the good until you experience the failures and, and problems and stuff like that. So I mean, I'll tell you one thing. At add it, we're not failing because we're not trying. That's for sure. That's for sure. And so we're always trying. And so we'll 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 get we'll face hardships and we'll mess up, but we're definitely trying. And that's the goal. And so and that's the case across the board. Well, um, to be thirty one years old with three hundred employees, dude, don't quit being hard on yourself. You're crushing it, and I'm so damn proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We, uh, we have a very, very talented team. And so, yeah, but who who found that team? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely me. But you know, we we like I said, we you are only as good as 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 the people that support you. And so, I have a lot of support from a lot of talented people. Um, I mean, they work really, really hard across. And we always place. have this discussion on at our place because you know we'll we'll disagree. And then I always tell people, I say, well, you know, 
you haven't been here 20 years because I micromanage you and right. lift on yeah. your show. I, I, you already know I trust you. I mean, we trust each right. other. You wouldn't have stayed with me 20 years, and I wouldn't have stayed with you 20 years. We right. trust each other. My only job is so you just know my opinion. I'm just one light point. But right. this is your full-time job, and this right. is my – I'm hearing about it in a, in a one-hour meeting. So, you know, right. just, uh, you know, do your own thing and I trust you and uh, shit happens and successful man fall down seven times, get up eight. And you're named after Muhammad Ali who said that all Absolutely. champions learn how to get up off the mat. And when you get your butt knocked out and you're laying on the mat, all Muhammad Ali found a way to get back to his feet and everybody right. else finds an excuse to give up. And, and right. the, the success is that it's get knocked out on your back seven times, get up eight. Life's a journey, and um, you just keep coming up with an enthusiastic, enthusiastic reason to keep running into the next operatory, to right. meet the next dental patient nightmare. For sure. Who never sure. brushed, never flossed, doesn't give a 100%. crap about their teeth, and, and you, you fix the crown, and she says she doesn't think it matches, and all you can see is a liver spot on her forehead the size right. of a 25 cent piece. So, you know, but you just got to get all fired up and run back in that room and fat enthusiastically to meet the next crazy person. Absolutely. You never give up. You just got to keep pushing. Yeah. Right. And, and eventually something's going to give, something's going to give. And yeah. so we're all about that here. And so, especially in advertising, cause you know, many times you advertise and market and things go wrong, things fail, certain things aren't working and you just got to keep problem solving. And so, I mean, we leave, we live, eat and breathe. And, know, and if you had work. no problems, so. you actually would stop learning anything. You, you don't, you don't learn exactly. a damn thing. Okay. Exactly. So let's go on then. Um, so i uh, just to get my mind back on track to get started. You get one module of something free for a month and the modules were. No, no, no. The module is free for life. It's completely free to the practice for life. So you can use for life. So any product you use at added, it's completely free. Whether that be the review software, whether that be patient. Forms, okay. So you're going to pick one for free. Positive patient Absolutely. forms, yeah. online scheduling, engage, email campaigns, telemed. Um, you covered positive patient forms. Is that a big deal? Like digital forms. So, yeah. you know, introducing digital forms is huge in the COVID era because you, you can't have, gotta have touchless check-in, like the pre-COVID screening forms, new patient forms, all of that is digital at added. It's free. There's no strings attached. You just come in, we set you up and you use it completely free of charge. Um, online scheduling where it books based on your real time availability engages the texting and the recall and so any texting recall things like that telemed is our is our is our teledentistry software where you can do virtual care through videos so any of these offers completely free of charge for life um, we just introduce you to come check out our platform right and so um, use our platform if you like it consider getting the whole thing for just 99 bucks a month okay i want to ask you some more uh, detailed questions because that's uh i think all the really great companies are with attention to detail, but so many times in a dentist's meme, I always click into the the link to see, you know, just who am I talking to? Young, right. you know, whatever. And so many of them, over half, the website comes up, your connection is not private. Attackers might be trying to steal your information. Um, yes. Um, yes. I mean, and it says that it doesn't have a net ERR underscore certificate error certificate authority invalid or whatever, whatever. Um, so what are patients going to do? Because are they going to, um, what happens when they go to your website? And that's what I see well, on half the websites. Are, well, you, that, is that what you're seeing? I mean, do you, have you noticed that? It doesn't happen too often. Um, it's really rare nowadays, but it has to do with the SSL certificate on your website expiring. So usually what happens is when you buy a domain, you get an SSL certificate, which is like a, a little thing that, that just, it's like a lock icon when you're on Safari or on an iPhone. It's like a, little, a lock icon next to the URL. So when that expires, because it renews every year, sometimes you don't put an auto renewal, it can expire. So that just creates a secure IP address connection with the user. So, and just to skip all the technical jargon, you just have to go to whoever your registrar is, if it's GoDaddy or HostGator or something like that, you just have to renew that that certificate. And it's like seven or eight bucks a month or 10 bucks a month and or a year, actually 10 bucks a year or something like that. And, and you just renew that and it, it'll go away. Okay. Um, and um, okay, so we talked about the first two. Let's go to online scheduling. Um, you know, I mean, the first time I ever talked to somebody about that was on a podcast like four years ago. Um, right. Is that, and the dentist's first response was, 
well, man, I don't want somebody to schedule at two o'clock. Right. You know, blah, right. they freak out. How is right. online scheduling um, going? How how is that going along? It's definitely grown a lot. Um, you know, being able to schedule based on real time availability is huge, Dr. Howard. It's it's you know, being we we set it up to where you can customize everything. If you are specifically only accepting new patients in a specific operatory or with a specific provider or at specific times of the day, uh, we fully customize our software to meet your needs with Dentrix, Open Dental, Eagle Soft you know, uh, clear down and some of these other softwares. And so we're, we're all about customizing that for you. But the best part about it is when that patient, we've seen an increase in conversion rates on websites when that schedule availability is there. And it works extremely well when it's tagged along with text message confirmations. So what happens is they go on your website, they schedule an actual time, which is super cool. First of all, it's like booking an airline ticket, which is, you know, can you imagine not doing that online? And so you schedule an appointment online and then you automatically get a text message confirmation saying, hey, your appointment has been confirmed for this time. Like that's super cool, right? Like patients love that. It just, it makes it super easy. Nobody wants a call and you can even collect their insurance information and all those kinds of things so that there's no hurdles in getting them in and, 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 and seeing them. And so we really automate that process as much as we can to save the front desk time, you know, and, and it, it, it's really, really effective for a lot of our practices. Okay. So another attention to detail about, um, um, you know, they're, they're coming out of school. Um, maybe they were working in DSO. They usually change jobs every year, and the majority don't work in DSOs. I mean, Heartland has a thousand offices. Right. There's a hundred and fifty thousand general dentists that work thirty two hours a week or more, and another thirty thousand specialists. No right. one even has one percent of this market. So they're most likely, if they're five years out of school, they've had five jobs. And they're all with private practice, um, and um, they want to pick their um, practice management system. And Dentrix is the market leader because owned by shine and they have right. half the market. Then number two would be Patterson with that uh, Eagle soft. Um, but, um, what is, if they asked you, um, which one works best for, you know, um, sharing data with like another platform and merging. Oh. Now, are you, okay. now, do you not want to answer because channel conflict? <laughs> and, and well, I understand that. My, I mean, that, that'd yeah, be like, that, my, that'd be like me okay. going to your dental office say, if you could just pick working on men or women, which right. one would you gladly get rid of? You said, oh, I'd get rid of all the men. Well, if all the male patients right. in your town heard that. Right. So is it is it too channel conflicty for you to answer that? Well, I'll lose a couple of connections if I say anything on this call. I'll put it that way. Um, so I yes, definitely I'll just say can't. it. I'll just say yeah. it. Um, uh, um, Dentrix so sucks so bad that if you like it, that should be a really huge red flag that – you don't comprehend something because if you, I mean, any high tech company doing anything move to open dental because it's open. That's, you know, and I don't get anything from open dental. In fact, they don't even advertise anywhere because too many people are trying to get onto open dental and they can't right. ramp up employees fast enough. That's why when I tried to get him to come my podcast, he didn't do it for like two years. He said, you know, well, the last thing I need is a surge of new customers. And the other ones are right. buying advertising everywhere. It's right. just because it's open. It's just right. because it's open. And uh, I was with SoftDent for 30 years because when I got out, Kodak and SoftDent, that was the biggest thing there was. But my right. gosh, uh, right. Open Dental, you can have your 12-year-old um, grandchild get in there and try to hook something up or, you know, because yeah. it's open. So yeah, uh, yeah. you probably couldn't say it. I, I said it for you. I don't know if you agree with any of that or disagree. Well, I don't. So, I mean, I, I know quite a bit about practice management softwares, but I don't actually use one, right? Like I don't use it on a day-to-day -day like a practice does. So I don't, I can't say which one's the best for whatever reason. Um, and more importantly, like, you know, we have practices that use all of them. And so we integrate with all of them. We, we try to do as much as we can for them. And so I don't know if I'm the best resource to give you an answer for that. Plus, if I did by any chance, I'd probably you know, upset a lot of these companies because we do partner with, um, you know, uh, a lot of these companies that, you know, produce these softwares like Shine and, and, and Patterson and stuff like that. So well, I hey, next time you talk wanna... to those two guys. Yeah, tell, absolutely. Tell, next have, time you talk have... to them, tell them I said they suck. Okay. Uh, I be, definitely uh, will not Tell them it was an online that. review. I'll tell them to watch well, no, this video. No, I, 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 I actually <laughs> went down there to their head. I flew my own butt down to Effingham, Illinois, just to tell him oh, yeah? in person what I thought of his deal. Because it's not about me. It's about right. he's hurting the industry with all the bullshit. I mean, uh, I mean, they right. tell you, well, 85% of the software we write 
has never even been used. You can go to the report journal and look at that up. Okay, so that's why right. the, the receptionist there doesn't know how to use the software because 85% of the shit no one uses anyway. I mean, you right. wouldn't go to Hertz rent a car and say, hey, when someone wants to check in their car, here's 8,000 things you could ask them. Right. Uh, I just want to know the right. mileage and the gas yeah. gauge. Oh, yeah. you're talking about operations and logistics. Right. You crazy, right. stupid fool. You, um, they, 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 I told them, we'll just set up a deal so you can close that function. So I can right. reduce 4,000 buttons down to eight. Right. I even suggested, why don't you get the biggest consultant out there like Sandy Pardue and have the Sandy Pardue version of it where she'll right. take out everything. She, they won't do anything. They, I mean, you know, they don't even try. You know, and this this encompasses all of the EE charts, not just Dentrix and these. But, you know, I just came to realize literally four weeks ago. So one of my really good friends, he's a dentist, and we were just talking one day. And, and he was, and, and I showed, and, you know, he, he was telling me that it's really hard for him to see in the software how many patients he recommended crowns to but didn't actually convert into doing a, a debt treatment, right? So these are basically unscheduled crowns. Like there's no, like it's too complicated for them to go and create a schedule for patients they recently, re, you know, recommended a treatment for and then to follow up on those patients, right? Getting a dashboard to see, hey, which of my patients are showing today and how many of their siblings are unscheduled, right? How many patients are showing today and, and, and of my patients today, how many of them have, you know, specifically like a, a macro schematic, right? How many of these patients that came in today, did they schedule a hygiene six months from today? You know, there's so many like these data points that are not easy to get in these softwares. It's crazy. So I did actually recently, two months ago, started building these dashboards. So in about January, February, we're going to be coming out with a new pl- new module in the, in, the, in the added platform. And we haven't published this on our website. It's, called, it's going to be called practice analytics. And it's actually going to show Dennis these lists of patients like, hey, these are all your unscheduled counts. These are all your patients that you saw today that didn't schedule the next appointment. And a lot of cool data points like that so that you can use mass texting and email campaigns to get these patients back in. And so um, let me put it this way. The more mistakes these practices, these, these softwares make, the more opportunities we have to add value to our dentists. And so we're constantly working to add value. And, and, and so we, we, we look for that opportunity. But can I, can I give you a better idea? Right. Uh, th- this is a better idea. Um, why don't you just go for the whole touchdown? I mean, the, the problem you need a dashboard is because the dentists all have their right. accounting and uh, QuickBooks Online. Yes. They do their taxes from TurboTax, and then they yeah. and then they got all this data over here. And someone yeah. just needs to connect all three of those. I mean, I mean, right, imagine right. imagine this. I, I I'm um, the dentist doesn't know any of their numbers. Um, you go you go into a dental office, and you say um, to the doc. How much do you charge for an MOD composite? Let's say uh, two fifty. You're know, like, dude. Um, okay, you. How many PPO plans do you sign up for? Uh, I think we're on four. Okay, right. well, you're on twelve PPO plans, and you get paid between one hundred and ten to two thirty. So the two fifty you just told me doesn't even exist in your little bubble, and 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 if you were making fifty um, percent overhead at two fifty. Well, then you'd be doing it for free at 125. And indeed, you signed up for several plans to do these at 125. So how about I go to schedule um, Ali for a MOD composite, and it's hooked up to my accounting and my overhead. It right. knows my variable cost that goes up and down with the number of employees I see of labor lab supplies versus the fixed cost I pay monthly, whether you see one patient or none, rent, mortgage, equipment, bill. And I schedule an hour, and it goes to red and says, lose $200. So she sorted right. it to a half hour, and it's like, you just made $4. She moves it to 20 minutes, and now you're right. making making a 50 bucks or something, you know? Um, they they right. just don't have any knowledge of what they're doing. No, um, they do you don't. think, how long will it be? Why doesn't, um, why doesn't Quicken or TurboTax, why aren't they starting in division to go hook up to all these? Like, like you go to your friend who does auto transmission, same dilemma dentistry has. Every small business I've ever been in, same damn thing. How could Quicken and TurboTax not know this? Well, you know, the problem is, is that dentistry, TurboTax is first of all hitting a huge industry. They're not just doing dentists, right? And 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 the reason why nobody comes into industry and to put this out there, you know, these vendors that provide these practice management software, they integrate into all of these dental offices data, right? They get all this patient data and they protect that data. Vendors have a very hard time getting in because these people cut, like, you know, create bridges around them from allowing these third-party people to get in. So Quicken doesn't integrate with 
your practice management software. They can't give you that data, you know? They like these, like it's so hard for other people to get in. And that's that's why Open Dental has blown up so much. Not to start advertising Open Dental, but they've blown up because like you said, they're open. So they let everyone in versus these other provide these other e, you know, PMS and EHRs, they really restrict that that incoming uh, connection. And so, and then, you know, I mean, honestly speaking, dentistry doesn't have enough innovators in it. Um, and the moment an innovator does come into dentistry, an equity fund, private equity VC fund comes in and starts thinking, how can I make hundreds of millions of dollars? And I can only do that if I also go and tackle med spas and accountants and lawyers and, 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 and medical, you know, cardiologists and primary physicians and all of that. So like you're, you're in dentistry, you have the small innovator who doesn't have the funds and the means to innovate. Then you have the serial innovator who then gets bought out by a bigger company that has bigger aspirations outside of dentistry. So right now what's happening is you have all these people that are, that are, that are using their connections and, and their softwares to go outside of dentistry instead of building more and more better solutions within dentistry. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's kind of, that's the whole problem. I don't want to call out any of my competitors, but like a lot of these companies that have got so much funding are now going outside of dentistry. And they're going outside of dentistry because that's where the money's at, right? And they got to pay the shareholder. The shareholder's got to see that 10, 15 X ROI. A big reason why we never look for funding is because we're not, I mean, the money's great and everything, but we enjoy the thrill of building amazing solutions, you know, like building a product that works. Well, I got to, I got to, I, I got to so, brag one. We've gone over an hour, but I got to make one little bragging thing is um, same thing in 1998 when I got the idea I was going to do dental town. It was all for selfish reasons. I right. wanted to be able to talk to another dentist because, you know, you come home, everyone that loves you. If I told my dad, how stressed I was about a root canal, and I think I messed it up. Right. They'd just say, oh, well, I'm going to say a prayer for that. If I tell my mom, she'd say a rosary. Every, everybody right. that loved me was just going to uh, do something. I wanted to talk to a dentist. And <clears throat> so we started this. I did all of this by my own cash at my dental office. And some companies, I don't want to mention any names like Dental Exchange and others, raised $20 million in venture capital. There was like 20 guys who raised right. millions with Dental Exchange, I think, raising the most. And right. none of them made it, except right. the dumb one, the one short, fat, bald guy in Phoenix, because I'm <laughs> like, we're just going to do it slow, focused, very targeted, which was me. I made the whole damn thing for what I needed, which was, right. it's going to be hard to sleep tonight, because did I just hurt a patient? You know what I mean? And I, all I wanted was to send a message on deal. But I, I want to, can you still save for some overtime? Because I haven't got to all yeah. my questions. Okay, Absolutely. Um, Go for okay, it. Um, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so telemed, right. I mean, it's it's every third word is telemed, telemed, and right, that's one of right. your free deals. Um, a lot of people are saying um, that telemed is for physicians because nine out of 10 physicians are never going to do surgery. Just like, right. just like lawyers, only 3% of lawyers have ever done a case right. in front of a jury. Right. And, right. and they're saying, dude, we work in an operatory. We do surgery right. all day. In fact, if right. you just lose one eye, um, right. you're, you get disability. So telemed right. is for medicine, not dentistry. Is that true or false? Right. So it depends on what you're trying to use telemed for. So, you know, if you're in dentistry, you're right. I'm, so we, we've actually had case studies for this. So we've had like hundreds of customers, right? So when COVID hit, a lot of them are like, hey, dude, I want to put telemed on my website. They can book a virtual consultation on my website. It did not work, by the way. It completely failed because the money in a, sorry, and I don't want to speak financial, but the way a dentist makes money is either via hygiene or treatment, right? Both are not an option in teledentistry. But what is, is recare. So like your follow-up, right? So like, let's say you do an implant and then you need a follow-up the next day and that patient's, you know, like you want to kind of follow with the patient or there's kind of swelling or anything like that. Instead of having to come in on a weekend or a weeknight, you can quickly video conference that patient, talk to them, provide care, solve their problem, and then move on. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, but teledentistry is really big for a lot of our competitors because like you said, it's huge in the medical industry. Right. And so those people make a lot of money in those other industries that are heavily pushing video conferencing. Now, I'm not saying video conferencing doesn't work. It doesn't work for new patients. It doesn't work for your original hygiene and treatment. It works for your recare and following up with patients on a weekend or a weekday or after their treatment in the evenings and stuff like that. So you're saying income producers uh, in the office are dentists and hygienists. And uh, yes. in income producers are uh, dentists. Uh, and hygienists, um, and 
um, everyone else um, is support staff, right? Or, or what, what do you call them? Support? Well, what, what, what I'm saying is a dentist essentially makes the bulk of the revenue from either hygiene, meaning patients who come back every six months and eventually do any kind of treatment. Right. So diagnose and treat. That's essentially that, you know, majority of dental offices make the bulk of their 80 20 rule. Right. So 80 percent of your revenue comes from, you know, all your treatments. And so to get treatments, you need an active hygiene. You need patients coming in constantly for six month cleanings because then when they have a problem, you get, you know, you you provide that treatment. And so the treatment coordinator is everything in an office. The office manager is usually the treatment coordinator many times. And so that person is really important. Obviously, the dentist is so important, presentation and everything. And um, everybody else would definitely be support staff for getting those patients back in, making them feel happy and hopefully doing treatment. So. And it's so tough because I want to be politically correct. I, I hate calling the front desk a receptionist because some of them don't like that. I don't like that. Right. Um, right. I, you know, I mean, who would, who would, what is your career? I was named after a piece of furniture. I'm the front desk and my sister, her name is Barstool. I mean, uh, right. uh, but here's all I want to keep beating into everyone's mind about hygiene capacity. You got to know your numbers. So if a hygiene, if there's 52 weeks in the year, let's just make it 50, give her two weeks vacation. Um, let's say she works Monday through Friday, eight to five for an easy 40 hours a week, even though, you know, the average dentist is 32 hours a week, but easy math. Um, let's get rid of all perio, all that stuff. Just a full-time right. hygienist who works 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, could see a thousand people twice a year. Well, right. if you divide that by 20 new patients a month, you should be adding a hygienist every 4.2 years. Uh, if right. you're getting uh, 25 new patients a month every two years. Um, right. My gosh, what do you say the average dentist um, new patients is per month? Um, so the average, so... 70%. So on average, a dentist that works with Attic gets anywhere between 25 to 35 patients from online alone. Okay. So, okay, so you if should... you're getting 35, that means every two and a half year, you should add a hygienist. So you're in dental school. And, you and you know, your online. mom, you know, your mom, she's got a dental office. She's had practice for 30 years. She's had the same damn hygienist for 30 years. They're always in room one. They're right. never creative enough to just even think about putting her in room two. And and then your mom tells you she's gotten 25 new patients a month for 30 years. And they're, every time she gets 25 new ones, 25 have to leave or you would right. have had to have another exactly. hygienist. And, and, and 25 to 35 is just online. That doesn't include people who come from referrals. That doesn't include people who come from like insurance. People who come from other forms of advertising. So, so when you get a bad review, I mean, first of all, before you go going crazy on yourself, I mean, my God, I mean, if you haven't increased your hygiene capacity in 10 years, well, you haven't kept anyone um, over than a new patient for 10 years. So uh, my gosh, you're already, you just, just look up your new patient uh, numbers. And that's how many you're losing. So maybe this bad online review is just a window to a much greater problem. Again, when I go to um, small towns and stuff, and I meet a dentist, I'll meet some dentists as old as I am, and I'll say, "Dude, if right. you could have one thing right now, what would it be?" Oh man, new patients. I'm like, right. "Dude, you you're in a town of five thousand. You've seen twenty five right. new people a, a month for forty right. years in this town. You've had to piss off everyone in the county by now." So. Right. There's a front door, a back door. I always like that picture of Hoover Dam. That's what happens when a right. when a river practices retention. So I think patient retention, you know, and, and then I look at dentistry. They're always want to do a bunch of marketing to get new patients. No right. sophisticated player like Chase or um, um, Southwest Airlines. It's about retention. They're like, oh, well, let's pop this card and every five right. cards, a free round trip. Everybody, right. oh, use my credit card and earn these points. No one's trying to get a new patient. I mean, do you right. think Walmart, Southwest Airlines, and Chase, there's anyone out there that haven't tried one? They're yeah. trying to retain them. And then you look at all the cottage industries. We're not, we're not a single player as 1% of the market. There's no leadership in the market. And it's always right. this new patient stuff. So my right. holding your feet to the fire, how can your company help? How can add it help with my patient retention? It's all about reactivation. And so that's, that's exactly my point. And so you said it best at the very beginning, right? You get 10 patients and eight go out the back door and now you're trying to get 10 more patients, right? And so it's all about how do you reactivate that patient? And since first, how do you take care of them when they come in? Um, make sure it's, you know, easy to come in, make sure you take care of your patients, 
get good reviews and, and push all that out and then reactivate them in 30, in six months. If they don't reactivate, like, you know, you, you know how many new patients you got, but the question is how much do your practices know how many patients they lost? No software gives you that data, Howard. You can't go and open dental or in Dentrix or in Eaglesoft and be like, okay, this is how many patients I lost without building some complex report. And so my question is how many patients are you losing? Right. And, and these practices are losing so many patients. And up until two months, I didn't even know they couldn't see that data. I just learned that. So we're actually building that now to show them that. But more importantly, we've built the tools to help you reactivate those patients. Right. If you if a patient goes six months or eight months without booking their appointment, we've built the software is there to kind of get those patients back in. And so we, we coach our practices to do that. Because that, like you said, 70 to 80 percent of the revenue that comes into a dental office, Howard, doesn't come from new patients. It comes from existing patients. So that means that, you know, you can keep acquiring 20 percent of new patients all the time. But if you're even losing one fifth of your existing patients, all those new patients are completely just getting wiped. And, out. and let me and let me um, you're, you're worried about um, you're worried about uh, channel conflict. You don't want to piss off some of your partners. I own a media company, and my there, my teams are telling me, "Yeah, there, there's Howard. He's there. He is praising someone who's never advertised with us, and then bad mouthing our favorite customers. I mean, they they right. have the list. We stopped the list at one million dollars. Pete uh, Pete Janicki had a list of one million dollars advertisers where something I said at a lecture or my own podcast or whatever the hell. Right. He goes, "Yeah, yeah, that, that's our motto here. We we go out and get and establish a relationship. Then dumbass Howard and I'm like, dude, I'm telling the truth." I'm, I'm right. just telling the truth right. and you're, you're right. not going to stop me to do it. But I like to piss off my own listeners too. And dentists don't know that they're entitled lazy. And the first yes. red flag is, and not only do you not know your numbers, cause you don't even know all, that all the patients never came back. Right. And all you gotta right. do is look at the fact that you have one hygienist named Betty with a bell around her neck in room one <laughs> for 20 years to prove it. But the same dentist won't even do his damn hygiene. So he'll get a cancellation and someone will call him and say, oh, my gosh, is there any way I can get my teeth clean today? They're right. not going to go ask Dr. Lazy Entitled. And right, it's like, right. it's like you know what? Maybe you going back to do a cleaning, that's how you build a practice. The doc did the cleaning. But then humans, the only thing every one of them can get right is they can, um, it's, it's a, they can justify anything. If there's just right. one skill a human can do, they can justify anything. And there's only one thing they all believe in. You know what? Um, like, there's... 1100 different gods you know the only thing all humans believe in the u.s dollar sure. the u.s dollar yeah. i'm serious <laughs> I mean, they, they'll be they, they might hate america's guts and want to want to shut down the whole country but they still right. only want to hold the u.s dollar and i'm telling you doc that um my gosh doing your own hygiene so you're gonna say oh well, they don't want me to do it okay say whatever you want uh, but the bottom line is um if you get a cancellation and you can't do a cleaning you're a prima donna and your overhead is over 65% guaranteed 100% and you're setting a bad example for your team that well doc draws a line I mean he's not going to go out of his way to do a cleaning when in fact we have two hygienists that have done it for 20 right. years how can you be above a job when you work in the same building with two other people that have that job. Well, well, Howard, the best way to understand this is, and you know, my v, my VP of revenue, Josh, actually had this really good slogan he mentioned from someone else. I don't know where he got it from, but you can't manage what you can't measure. Right. 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 So if you have a hygienist, do you know what their diagnose rate is? Do you know at what rate are they diagnosing patients for treatment? At what rate is that treatment being accepted? Do we have those numbers on your staff? So you have this hygienist for 20 years, but do you know at what rate are they diagnosing patients for treatment? And at what rate is that treatment being accepted? Right? You don't have that data either. And no software gives you that. You have to pay more money to more vendors to get these kinds of softwares. And, and, or you have to run a very intricate report in, in one of these softwares. And it's so difficult to see these kinds of data points. And so that's why, right? So the dentist is all day working in the in the operatory and doing all these things. And at the end of the day, numbers don't lie. And they're just hamsters and wheels just going round and round and round, not able to see these data points by stepping out and looking at the macro. And and so we realize this and we realize that it's all a money making machine. So we're like, you know what, let's just fix, let's just provide a solution to our dentist and our dentist will see growth and they'll be happy. And and that's what it's about, right? And so that's kind of why we keep coming up with these solutions to add, you know, and giving it out for free because we're like, dude, this should be free. You know, it should be 
how can you do what you do if you don't have this kind of data? And so how can you manage a hygienist if you don't know at what rate they're producing treatment? You know? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a link and it's called um, DDS Doing Hygiene Under Dental Practice Management. And uh, my gosh, it's a, uh, um, you, you, should, um, you, you should look at these guys and, and, and what they think and you, maybe you can help them here because um, doing your own hygiene. And, and also, um, um, who's the guy you found at Citibank? Um, what was that guy's name that started Steve Bank? Uh, Weil, um, whatever. Um, they, they always ask him when he got older, he says, you know, how did you, how did some dumbass boy from Brooklyn, um, build Citibank? And how, how did you get that? And he goes, well, I was lucky. He goes, I, I, I was born up the street and I, I got a job there and I started in the mailroom. And the right. difference between all the other CEOs who came from other companies and didn't do a damn thing, he said, I was just curious. So like when I got a job, he says, the reason I stayed in banking because I got this first job and it was, in a, um, it was in a bank and I just asked the branch manager, I just asked him one thing. I said, well, when I write a check at the store for $10, how does it get back to the bank and how do you get the ten dollars in that right. grocery store man? He said not one person could do it. So every time a branch manager, regional manager, he said, Well, does anybody know how this company works? And they go, Well, I don't know. I mean, it's a, there's right. a, like a check clearing house. He's okay, where's the check clearing house? And then he went and visited there. And slowly from 16 to 26 to 36 and now he's on the high management deal and then when he gets to the top he knew the details of how everything was uh, unconnected at a time when everything was going digital and computerized and, and right. like voting today i mean I'll, I'll never forget from 94 to 2000 um you know no one saw that crash coming because um they didn't realize that everybody was making all that investment for y2k and then right. when Y2K came and it didn't, we were all prepared. Well, we were done. So it's time right. to start doing other things. So the sales were zero for January, February, then March came the collapse. Right. Thus right. Dell had to quadruple his advertising. Um, but I, everybody was hoping, well, great. Cause who could fill this void in Keynesian economics is when free enterprise can't deliver the government can. That's why to get out of world war two, we were building Hoover dam and all these projects just to get the machine going. And everybody thought, well, the government they'll digitize. So today I'm voting. I'm 58. I've lived here 32 years and, and it's showing that I do not have a home. I'm like, what the hell? I don't have a home? No, it says you live in your dental office and you can't live in a dental office or a commercial property to vote. In Arizona, you have to live in a residence. I said, well, obviously I don't yeah. live in my dental yeah. office. Obviously you've been to my practice. I know Dr. Fran, but I, I have to have the deal. And so I t told her my address and she said, well, I, I have to have proof. So I'm like on the phone calling my comptroller to, to, right. to take pictures of shit on her iPhone and, and send it to me. And, and it's just like, it's like the government. I mean, my God, they're so insane. And even voting, they, they say they want to get out the vote. If they wanted to get out the vote, I'm pretty sure there'd be an app on my phone. And I'm pretty sure it's got voice authentication, face right. recommend deal. The phone's always with you. Right, and and right. what did they need? They needed my driver's license which is good right. till I'm like 180 and, 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 right. and, a, and a piece of paper that had right. my address. I mean, it's just like, you can't yeah. fix stupid. And that's why if you're young, I don't care how this election turns out. I don't care who the frick wins. Um, every president in my lifetime has been worse than the one before. It's been a downward trend. And the next guy, I swear to God, it only take four to eight years and you'll wish the last guy was in. And uh, so um, government is the problem. It's never the solution. Just like, just like you, Doc. Um, there's no magic bullets. There's no silver bullets. You know what it is? It's attracting a good team. And here, here's the other mess up thing about management. When I find the right person on the team, I don't have to do anything. And they're there 20 years later. And I look like a great manager. But right, if you're not right. good and I got to micromanage and I got to stay on top of you and all that stuff, I put a lot of time and effort and I still look like crap because you're crap. 
So right, the manager's right, right. dilemma, it, it's like, it's like my only, job, you, my job is, did I find the best quarterback for the football right. team? And if go. I didn't, what, I'm going to go down there, fat ass Howie, and show him how to throw a pass right. and catch a ball. Right. I mean, come on. Yeah. You don't, and when you need a consultant, you know what, you know when I, what the first consultant I ever had was, you know who it was? No, who was it? It was the most famous soft dent trainer for all of Arizona. I had this management information system. Yeah. I said, well, Sandy, he's, he's, he's the best trainer. She knows more than anybody. So uh, Sandy called me up and said, well, here's Dale. Here's the hour. And I said, Sandy, I don't want you for an hour. I want to hire you. No, right. you can't because I own my own business and blah, blah. I said, well, what's the best money you ever made in a year? Right. Okay, well, give your, what kind of raise would you like? I said, will you work for me for that? She goes, God, I guess I didn't. I didn't think anybody ever say that. And the people go work at uh, at Aspen and Heartland and whatever, right, and they right. go set up their own office. And you know, they try to find a dental assistant that will work for a dollar an hour. Some you know, some crack right. house. And I'm like, okay, you worked at Heartland. They have a thousand office. Who was the best office manager in Arizona? Who was the regional director of Arizona? You couldn't right. get those, one of them to? And that's my last and final question because I know you're thinking, is this guy ever going to shut up? But no, I, always, I always tell people that, you know, if it's an intellectual cerebral answer, the DSOs always jump first. The dentists are always emotional, traditional, whatever. Right, um, so right. my question to you is, let's keep this shit real. Um, what percent of your business is, uh, have you attracted any DSOs? Have any DSOs liked you, what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a couple of DSOs, um, one in Arizona, one in the Northeast. Um, What's the one, one in Arizona? In, um, I can't, I can't mention that name, but they're, can, they're, can you they're email about, or text me, email me yeah, Howard at Dental sure. or, or set us for up. Sure. I, I, I'd want to, she will, they will love to meet you. For well sure. then absolutely. I'll do her they're as a support. follow up to you to keep it going. And, uh, and let me tell you something because, absolutely. because I've been a lot of pushback that I'm just supposed to tow the party line and DSOs are yeah. evil and be against, oh, first of all, shut up. Number right. two, I got 6,000 kids that just went out of dental school and they ain't got a job. And guess right. who's the only people hiring? DSOs. DSOs and when yeah. I was little, it was only the Army, Navy, Air Force, Indian Public Health. Right. If you're hiring my homies straight out of dental school, which I won't do because I've done it before. My God, right. the first hundred fillings you've done, you're, you know, God, that it's horrible, but right. someone's got to be that guy. But the DSOs are delivering when it's down. And I think a lot of kids are going to have a whole different view of the guy who hired them. And, that, and then I'll look at Dennis. I'll say, "How you close Thursday at 5, and you don't open until Monday at 8. From Thursday right. at 5, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, how many people call your office with an emergency? Because I know the other end of the number is 8.5 out of every 100 people that show up at the emergency room have an odont odontogenic origin problem because right. you're unlisted and closed why and you've already paid all your fixed cost why don't you just have her in there with a uh, one person because right. one toothache would be a root canal belt and crown for two grand we've already bingo. made money bingo right so we break exactly. even with one toothache do you want to do that no it sounds like a pain in the ass okay then don't bad mouth the dso's that do it and gave her a job Exactly, and, and, and then and then last is look at cars. It's everything from a three hundred thousand dollar Ferrari down to a go kart moped. I mean, look at houses. Right. It's everything from a mansion, three bedroom, studio apartment, trailer. To right. me, who lives in a van down by the river. So you right. always have market segmentation. It always right. divides on price and service. And dentistry right. is not going to be all one thing to 8 billion people. It's going to have sure. many different price points, many different features. And uh, right. so um, your way is not always the right way. Uh, the market has a voice to it and it'll speak. But, um, but what, do you, um, what do you think... The DSO in Arizona, or the DSO's period, what do you think they like about um, your software? So, you know, see, and, and to address that question you mentioned very well, the DSOs are hiring, the DSOs are growing versus the individual practices are not, right? And the reason is because, and what I mentioned earlier, it's all about your systems and processes, right? These DSOs have the proficient processes in place, the software is in place to be able to reactivate those patients. Whereas smaller practices, you know, they don't set up their processes. They are lucky that their patients just come every six months or hygiene runs and everything runs fluently. The moment that system breaks, they don't have a 
a means to go back and reactivate those patients. And, and, and they get scared. Revenue goes down. They pull back the horses. They stop spending on advertising where they should be spending. I mean, the, a big reason DSRs are doing so well is because it's actually cheaper to advertise today than it was this time last year because all the dentists have pulled back, right? And so it's, it's, it's just a matter of having your systems processes in place to where you can be confident in your practice, confident in your, in your, in your business and confidently go forward. And when you can confidently go forward, you have the right people, the right staff, the right office managers, and you can take that leap of faith. Then and only then can you go in and attract and, and keep growing, you know? And so I, I just got to say DSOs love our products because it establishes their systems and processes. They're the most pickiest. They're the most particular. They're the most specific about how everything specifically works for them because they got their processes down. You know, and so it helps when a dentist steps out of their operatory and understands the actual dentistry and builds the processes around it, you know, and, and, and those are usually the ones that are not just individual dental offices, but those are usually the multi locations, the three locations, the five locations, the 15 locations, the, the 50 locations. And so those people are the ones who invest so much more time in the operations and, and, and management and personnel. So that's, All right, that's I, I'm looking. I don't think I have any more questions. Uh, my gosh, you're amazing. Did, did I not ask anything that you were uh, thinking I would bring no, up? No, no, no. This was a great conversation, Howard. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on twice. And and this is a really good conversation. I had a lot of fun. Um, and, and, and thank you so much for having me. I hope I added value and gave you some insights. I definitely learned a lot from you. So, so thank you so much. I appreciate okay. It. Well, Hey, I'm, uh, I'm visiting my grandkids a lot. So maybe uh, someday uh, we'll have a beer in Houston. A beer, or in or in B in Beville. Beville, is that right? Yeah, Beville. Yeah. Uh, well, Beville. I, I, I'm at Beville, but uh, they uh, we haven't. They they never asked me to take them into uh, Houston. They always asked me to take them to the Gulf, uh, to the, the Gulf. Gulf Coast, yeah. the Gulf Coast. They just you know kids yeah. and water and fish and all that stuff. But uh, God dang, I love that place. I don't know if it's the uh, the bias of four grandkids out there or what, but every time I Definitely. go there, I'm thinking, okay, you know, one time you're gonna come here and you're not gonna go back. But hey, thanks so much. Uh, for coming on the show and helping my homies during these really tough times. Uh, they're sure. down, Absolutely. they're down a third, and you're fighting damn hard uh, to get them back. Thank you for doing, for everything you do. And for dentistry, thanks for coming back on the show again. Thank you so much, Howard. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.